Hi, good evening. Welcome to the Planning Board meeting of uh, Monday, July 8th. Um, and we are, I will start by uh, entertaining a motion to open the continued public hearings for Buckland Street and Leonard Street, the stormwater permit, and the petition to constru construct a paper street. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so just um, a process point. Um, Mr. Atwell is not going to be here tonight, but he could not vote on this hearing anyway. Um, and unfortunately, Mr. Uh, Durso is not going to be here. And missing this one means that he could not watch the previous one and this one. So he is no longer a voter. Mm -hmm. So our voters are Mary, Dave, myself, Gary, Amy, and Deb. Deb Roberts, new to the board. Okay. And I think you need, you need six, six for the um, stormwater? No, five. And how about the uh, paper street? Five. Five. Okay, five for each. Okay. Good. Thanks, Kobe. Okay, so we had talked last time about jumping in on the um, waiver uh, request. Did you want to start us off somehow? Uh, sure. Uh, Lou Petrosi for Wall Street Development Corp. Um, um, John was nice enough to uh, send me an email asking for an updated list of waivers that we were requesting over and above what was originally proposed. And uh, I did submit a revised list of waivers that um, were, has been um, revised based on the conversations that we've had with the planning board and the preferences that the board had relative to the certain items and based on our revisions of the plan over the last uh, eight to 10 months. So. Um, essentially, uh, the list of waivers, I'll go through them just quickly. So what I think, just from a process point, I'm going to have you go over one at a time, not yes. necessarily so quickly. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna bang through them um, and get questions and get our engineer and, and make decisions for you, okay? Okay, great. Right. Thank you. Um, so the first waiver, just out of Section 5.4, was an environmental analysis that was, seems to be required. Um, so we asked for a waiver on that since we are in front of the Conservation Commission with the whole project and uh, the no tra and traffic impact report. So uh, we're, we're going to stop on the environmental analysis. Um, your position is that you don't need the environmental analysis um, for the, uh, that we're, this is for the road construction, just to be clear. Yes, yes. Okay. And, um, and I'm going to go ahead and ask our engineer who's here if he has a, an opinion on the environmental analysis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Bill Paradis of Data Group. Thank you. Um, I, I don't know that uh, the, the, the road in particular has a significant impact uh, other than the, the issues we're dis discussing wetlands, uh, stormwater management. So they would be, in your opinion, they would be captured uh, in the stormwater permit process right, yeah. and then the CONCOM review? Right. Thank you. Um, anybody around the table have questions on this? Bill, you can probably stay there. Okay. I'll start with you, Deb. Um, I'll pass the moment. Okay. You, you may participate, which you can't. Okay. No. No. No issues. So, Deb, last chance. Um, so, we're waiting for CONCOM to make its final approval. So, you're asking for us to make a wait. I'm just trying to figure out process. No. So, CONCOM, correct me if I'm wrong. CONCOM is not weighing in on this Paper Street pe petition. It is weighing in on the stormwater. Well, no, they're weighing on, in on those, p the construction of Buckland Street as well. But the reason why they have not taken this up in full is because we told them we we're in front of the planning board waiting for the final plan to be um, agreed to, and then they would 
then we would submit to them so they would vote on the same plan that we have in front of the planning board. So they are, um, they are, um, have an open public hearing and I guess it would be before the stormwater because that's the one item that is within their jurisdiction, the 100 foot uh, buffer zone, the rest of the roadway is outside their uh, jurisdiction. So th did you submit something to them for the roadway? Yes, okay. yes. And when are they going to hear that? Well, we're going back there tomorrow night. So, so yeah, um, I, I, and I don't know which is the right order to go in, but I'd be in favor of waiting to see what CONCOM has because there were some questions as to the drainage onto other properties. Um, and not being an expert in that matter, um, I'd like to make sure with them that everything is um, co is together and put together well. That's that would be my only. I, I totally understand that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and entertain a motion on um, granting the waiver for the environmental analysis, which would mean there would be no environmental analysis required by this board. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any for any comments? Would we add a condition that con this will be subject to concom? I to definitely review? think that our, our overall approval would would so that would be my okay. My That's preference. a nice way to put it. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. So with a condition that any uh. Any approval has as a condition CONCOM's successful approval or approval. On interpretation of what's happening. All, right. All those in favor of granting this waiver signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. <coughs> um, traffic impact report. Go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, Madam Chairman, uh, we felt that since this uh, proposal, um, Buckland Street would only be able to service four residential dwellings at the most, that uh, we didn't think that that was a, a significant impact to the um, access and egress from Buckland Street onto Pleasant Street. There's adequate sight distance in either direction. and. Um, so we, we asked for a waiver on the traffic report. Do you have any thoughts on that at all? Anybody have any questions? Or I'll start at the other end. I'll start with Mary this time. No, I don't think, I think, you know, four houses does not add a huge amount. It's, it certainly is a busy street mm -hmm. that it would be going on to. Um, but uh, but I don't think four houses is significant enough <laughs> yeah. to. You know. How about you, Dave? Require yeah. a report, Robert. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't think four houses is gonna be the straw that broke the camel's back. Gary, Robert, Amy. I don't think four houses is small. Yeah. Um, is in traffic in, in in traffic impact reports is there anything that talks about hours of construction coming in because there are neighbors that could be interrupted um i know the traffic reports are significantly um, for a larger scope but where would something like that go so in my in my estimation it would be just our overall construction bylaws but yeah, so th that wouldn't be a traffic impact study. <clears throat> that might be in an operation and maintenance plan, or okay. construction management plan, something yeah, like that. Yeah, so that would be my suggestion, is um, some interpretation of, of how we can guide them to be not disrupt disruptive to the neighborhood. I'm going to put a note over here, just O&M plan for construction issues, which it will be included, but we can make sure. Okay, Deb? Yeah, thanks. Um, okay, I'll entertain a motion uh, to approve waiving the, the completion of the traffic impact report. So moved. Is there a second? Okay. Second. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? 
Go ahead. Uh, the next uh, waiver requested was Section 8.2.1.G, which deals with um, property lines at street intersections to be rounded or cut back to provide it for curb line radius not less than 15 feet. Um, quite honestly, I'm not um, familiar with that particular waiver where it intersects on Pleasant Street, but we thought that given its location that we <coughs> might include that waiver um, going for going forward. Um, I imagine that it also is the ac emergency access piece on Maple Street Extension as well. Right. So you wouldn't have that on there either. Exactly. So Phil, what, are, what is that exactly for? Is that the, the vehicles, the emergency vehicles or? So, so yeah, typically you want to provide a, a right, it, it, it's the property line, it's the right of way line that would typically um, have a radius where they meet so that, so that you, your, your sidewalk would be um, able to follow the, the curb line and the, all the sidewalk would be within the right of way, uh, which typically goes out at, at, the, at, at the intersection. Uh, in this case, um, he doesn't own the property. It's, it's, not in the, it's, it's not in the right of way. So he's, um, and uh, right now, there's no sidewalk. Um, through the chair? Yes, go ahead. I just I had a question for Phil. It, does this affect the um, fire department turning, you know, just to have the, the rounded corners of pavement um, meeting up with Pleasant Street? Is this something for the fire department? So typically the, the uh, traffic, the turn plan, the auto turn plan, or, or the yep. swept path plan, whatever you want to call it, would, would uh, take into account where the radio the, the curving is but because there is no sidewalk they can put the curving right at the, the apex of the property line can i make a point that the sidewalk hold on one second like hold on one second go ahead and finish yeah, yeah. okay yes the lack of sidewalks is a separate waiver so it I is a separate we should assume that there's not going to be any sidewalk i agree it is a Thank separate you. waiver yeah um i'm sorry i kind of lost it so it's not necessarily the fire department's requirement? No, it, I mean, obviously you wanna have a, a, an access that the, the fire truck, the, the emergency vehicles can access. Right. Um, but I think the whole, the whole uh, right of way, if you have enough land, you can create the right of way so that everything's nice and neat and you know, you <coughs> conventional sidewalks, you grass strips and yada yada, the whole, right. the whole section can fit in there. Uh, in this case, and in several cases, you know, similar to it, if they created before, if the, the right of way is created before the subdivision regulations, you know, you can't fit them in, or you can ask, you know, get a waiver, or get a easement from the neighbors to, to, to provide that, and <coughs> that's how you would address it. Um, yes. Um, through the chair, I guess two questions. So number one, if there were sidewalks, then this waiver becomes more meaningful, correct? And then secondly, so from what you're describing, it sounds like if we were, if we were to require this rounding, then that would result in additional um, land being impacted um, for the abutters. Right. We maybe discuss this when we discuss sidewalks? Um, is it, and there are currently no sidewalks on Pleasant. Um, so there are no sidewalks on Pleasant? On that side of the street. On that side of the street. On that side of the street. Okay. Yeah, but you know sidewalks. Um, yeah, it, it does make sense to, um, to talk about sidewalks at the same time. Can I? Yeah. I, I don't, I'm, I'm looking at the um, 8.2.1 and there's seven subsections. And I, I understand what Phil's talking about the radar, but I don't see anything about sidewalks and right away. So. And they, and they didn't say, they said all of them just blindly. I'd like to feel more comfortable but exactly what we're waving. So your point is 
That's G. 8.2.1. G. 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 Um, I have it as the, the waiver being in section 8.2.1, location and alignment all subsections. But this is the updated one. Oh, the updated one. It has a one. G next to it. Okay, so it's only G. Only Thank G. you. That's an update. Sure. That helps. <coughs> yeah. Property, can I read? Is it okay? Yeah, no, it's pretty please short. do. Please do. Property lines at inter street intersections shall be rounded or cut back to provide for a curb rate line radius of not less than 15 feet. Greater rate of shall be required by the board where determined. So I guess I would ask specifically why is this an issue? Well, um, as I mentioned, it's, I, I'm not an engineer. I'm not quite sure why it's an issue, but it's, um, we can't. At the intersection of where the right of way of Pleasant Street and the corner of the of Buckland Street and the adjacent property, we can't provide a rounding at that where those two points intersect. The reason why we comply with the turning street, uh, the truck plan, and so on, is because uh, where Buckland Street intersects uh, Pleasant Street, the edge of the pavement is. It, approximately 30 feet away from the edge of the right-of-way. So we can provide a turning radius out within the, the right-of-way. Into the other side of the street. Right. right. So, but we can't provide a turning radius because these lines come in at a right, at 90 degree angles to the street. So we can't provide a, a, a turning radius where this is saying that we, where the two lines intersect, basically. Thank you. So it's out of our control relative to that particular provision. Okay. But we do provide the roundings where the entrance of Buckland Street intersects with Pleasant Street, uh, the existing paved way of Pleasant Street. Okay. If that makes any sense to you. John, did you have anything? I, I forgot to ask you on the first two, but I, I apologize for that. Any? No, no comments on that. Yeah, I see that we have a comment from the audience. This web year. Good evening, uh, Peter Barbary. Again, I represent the owners of, of 60 and 62 Pleasant Street. Um, two, two quick points. One, as I understand the plan now, it includes additional improvements on Maple Street extension. And, and that was not part of the original plan and application. So I would question whether that aspect of it can go forward without that property owner signing without a problem carry notice, without notice to abutters of that new land being part of the application. I think they're entitled to that review and approval. So that's procedural item number one. I, item number two, from the viewpoint of the construction waivers that you are now beginning to talk about, and, and had no issues with the first two waivers that you talked about, but from the viewpoint of the construction waivers, um, you know, your stormwater regulations set up procedures and guidelines and construction details to protect the town and protect the apartments. And I don't think there's any reason to waive any of those. There's no argument that beyond the first 220 feet of road, the applicant owns all the land to make all those improvements that are called for under your regulations. So there's technically no reason to waive any of those be it curbing, be it sidewalk, be it underground utility, be it lights, be it any aspect dealing with drainage requirements as well, because he has the land, it's his own land, there's nothing stopping him from complete, completing the improvements in accordance with your regulations. The first 220 feet or so, a little bit of a different story in the sense that those regulations, excuse me, that width of way, assuming he has rights in those, is limited as to what he can build. Um, Questions from that from the viewpoint of course payment were opposed to that without a specific agreement in maintenance in a budget. If they're going to have it, to make sure it's maintained. There's a sufficient budget for those property owners to make sure it's maintained, not only for our protection of my clients, but also the town, because a portion of that extends out into the road. So I don't think we should take any action on any of that stuff until a budget is in place, a maintenance agreement is in place that's recorded affecting all the lots that would be part of this development. So construction waivers were against, particularly beyond the first 220 feet. The other ones I think were against in the nature of anyone that would have impact the drainage running off from the two funds property. And I don't think any approval should be given until such a time as it's proven, 
Not that it shall not affect the waters, but it's proven that it will not affect the waters. And there shouldn't be any condition of approval for a subsequent review and approval of things, because that's the purpose of this public hearing. So those are the two points. Thank, Thank you so much. Through the chair. Yes. I just want to say that I, I totally agree, and I was looking for the right time in these waivers to state exactly what the gentleman said as far as treating the first section of the 220 feet different and not re you know, allowing some waivers, but the second section, it's all his property and he should build a road like every other developer builds a road. Uh, I, I totally understand. Any, anybody Thank else you. want to? Yep. Um, okay. Um, other questions or comments on the property lines of pavement rounding at street intersections, which would be, following this conversation, in the part of the property that he doesn't own completely in control? Well, I don't see any specific details as to what he would suggest as an alternative, except that he said it would be rounded. Um, and I'm seeing a picture over there that shows it rounded, but I don't think it's in our folder. We didn't get it in time. Well, so included, I'm saying, it's I'm, included in the plans. We submission. don't have any plans. But so so that blued this, this blued, blued section is um, can some. Uh, this, this plan this plan was submitted as part of the plan package. So what we're talking about is in this area. Some right minor here. a minor curve. Right. Um, uh, and this, so, this section here, which is what Mr. Barberi is claiming that is a new submission to the uh, application. Um, we disagree it's an easement and so um, it's not part of the do we yet plan. have the documentation that easement exists we, I have documentation that we, we have yet have documentation uh, that that easement exists no we have an agreement so I don't I, I, I don't know how we approve a plan if we don't know that the is that yeah. includes that necessarily well, I, I, I was reading through some of your other decisions that you made and you made it a you know what we're talking about this one and, oh, and no. I'm gonna lose my patience really quickly if we don't stay focused on this one okay. I'm just telling you where I'm coming from okay thank you well you could, we'd happy to provide a, a copy of the agreement as I mentioned at the last meeting we made quite a, a few um, modifications to address public safety and fire access and fire protection. Yeah. And that's all part of the agreement that we have to make those improvements yep. that we can offer those to uh, the town. And I know for a fact we asked for you to provide that documentation, or I did. So if you're happy to do so, I really would like you to do so. Okay. I'll discuss it with the uh, owners and see if they want to disclose it. It's not my, there's a confidentiality. Well, thing. your plan hinges on, at least in part, on that okay. ability to do that. Understood. So. We can set that. Yeah. Would, would it be appropriate to disclose the nature of the agreement without the financial terms? Because, I mean, what well, we I care, don't care about what, the financial That's my terms. point. I mean, I think what, what well, Mr. Petrosi is concerned with is that there's some financial considerations that they don't want to disclose. All we care about is that there's actually some <coughs> agreement in place. Yeah, there is a signed agreement, but essentially, I don't think, I don't know if you were at the last meeting or not, but we met with the uh, um, homeowners and they have uh, some um, uh, improvements that they'd like to see to help their, uh, they don't have access to sewer, they don't have access to a strong water system there. Um, we were uh, available to, amenable to extending the sewer line to their property so they would be able to tie into our force main. And we were also met with the fire chief because on Maple Street Extension, there isn't currently a hydrant for fire protection. So, um, which would also help them. We were extending the water main uh, up Buckland Street to the corner of Maple Street Extension and Buckland Street and installing a new hydrant. And we're also providing them with new driveway accommodations on their property that would also act as a turnaround for uh, emergency vehicles uh, in the event. And also, we're gonna provide 
uh, snow plowing and that kind of maintenance that would be part of the homeowners association that would take care so of it. So all I'm suggesting is that you can redact any sensitive information to it. We, and we could probably something. make accommodations to that. And, and, and clearly they, they may not have seen the sewer rates, what's happening with those in town. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I know that they're looking for people to tie in, so I'm <laughs> best I know. But that is uh, the reason why I don't feel that they need to, uh, it's not needed to amend the application because it's a, uh, it's an existing right of way. We're seeking, we simply seek, um, obtain their permission to make these improvements in exchange for uh, uh, lack of um, objections to the proposal. It's already an existing right of way, similar to Buckland Street, so we're just making it a uh, connection, which under the under your regulations, if you really go into 8.2.1 a um, the board's regulations pr provide that we're, we're obligated to provide extension of the roadway to properties to make connections for future roadway networks so uh, this in some respects would be doing that uh, by, by connecting the two roads yes um, I think we're kind of good on this because to your point, Mayor, we will get it in writing and to Gary's point, we can redact it and don't need the financial. So I would suggest that we make a motion to uh, vote on the uh, third. I, I'd, I'd be happy to email the agreement to the John in the morning if, uh, if that would be acceptable to the board. So, um, so I'm just thinking in my head about an approval of the waiver that is um, conditioned upon uh, the um, applicants proven ability to uh, utilize the pieces of property. No, that, that, that makes sense. Which waiver were you thinking? This is 8.2.1.G number three on our list. Okay, because of the rounding applies to both sections? Yes. Okay, okay I just yeah. Thank you. So does that make sense to, um, I'll entertain a motion to approve this waiver to um, to waive the requirement to round uh, the pavement at street intersections. Um, subject to if subject no, to. Not the pavement, property line. Sorry. Say pavement. No. It does say pavement rounding, I'm sorry. So. To allow for the pavement. It says property lines, pavement rounding at street intersections. What is the actual waiver? I think that's uh, what it's. Uh, property lines at street intersections shall be rounded or cut back. So I guess it's property lines, not pavement, I guess. It's property lines. Does that make sense? Property lines, so, so that you can put the pavement in the curve. All right, so to um, waive the requirement to put the pavement in at a curved radius. To not require rounding at the property. property. Okay, all right. So I'll entertain a motion to not require the rounding at the property lines at both ends of Buckland Street, should it be constructed, contingent upon or subject to uh, document documentation um, proving that the applicant has the right to construct the roadway through the private properties on both ends. So moved. Seconded. Is there just, any further? Just one point of discussion. Yes. I just want to state that I think we're also, again, assuming that that, that rounding has no impact on emergency access. I think emergency. I see the chief nodding his head. Yes. yes. So yeah. I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, I think that that is a different question. That's yeah. E okay. Either way, I wanted to make sure that the that the analysis for the emergency vehicles wasn't dependent on having that rounding. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? So it is subject to you documenting prior to doing anything that you actually have the right to do the yes. streets on those both ends. Okay. 
Um, I will, yeah, I will entertain, if you want to stick around, if we're able yeah. to come back. I, I we'll, can stick we'll around, keep around. Okay. So I will entertain a motion to um, continue this public hearing to a later point in this hearing um, and open the public hearing for Whisper Way um, as amendment to the special permit concept plan and the definitive subdivision plan. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Folks, ready? Yeah. Do we just want to comment for the? No, they're leaving now. What's that? I don't know if those people were staying. I just want to make sure they understood that we were going to the talk conversation is going to continue. I I'm hope sure. that was clear. You know, what? we close that line. So I got it. Okay. There we go. We got Gary. <laughs> Gary's got it. Thank you. Um, good for something. <laughs> good for a lot of things, but man, you are tall. Um, so um, we, we have changes from the last time. Do we have changes that are new tonight? Yeah, there were changes that were reviewed by Beta. Are there changes that are new tonight? I'm asking. Oh, sit yeah. we're, we're passing out things. Are those new to us tonight? Is that new? This is new. So this, I, I wanted to touch base with you before yes. I pass it out. They did send it to me like today. Okay. So I didn't know if you wanted me to pass it out and to talk about it or if you wanted to hold the Tuesday deadline. So we are holding the Tuesday deadlines firm until such time that we are actually, it has to be firm. And I know that in this case, we don't have a lot of uh, abutters that are um, focused on it, but it's very, it's impossible for me to actually react to the information in real time. I don't know how other people feel, but from a public access and, and uh, impact position, there's no way the public can participate if we get things the same day. It's the drive we're turning for You are welcome to introduce it. Okay, but we're going to have to have a, an opportunity yeah. to react to it. I think I think that we would be comfortable if you guys are comfortable. Uh, what we're looking for hopefully is a vote tonight. Uh, I think they're fairly straightforward things for you to do contingency. Um, okay, so, so what? Uh, hmm. uh, yes. I I realize that it might seem simple, but. We get inundated with information on the day of the meeting, I understand. and and all of us have day jobs, and, and so while it might seem simple for us to, to react to this, um, you know the the submitting something the day of and expecting us to react to it and then vote, I personally, I think we've we've, we've got to move away from that expectation. I don't think that we have ever done that either, okay. to be honest. So, and I, and I, for a, a lot of the right reasons. So go ahead and introduce it to us, but we do have to have an opportunity to have it reviewed. I don't know, I don't even know if John has had a shot at it. So, so go ahead, yeah. Two plans that are included in there are, uh, the turning radius plans for uh, basically the delivery truck and the fire truck. Beta's uh, comments was, the truck would be able to, you know, standard 30 foot long um, box truck would be able to pull in, make a turn, and be able to pull out. 
We can turn back in there. Right, that they're able to pull in and make the movement, the maneuver to turn around and pull back there. So that's what's included in that. And it's also a budget for the stormwater operation and maintenance plan. Okay. So, Madam Chair, if I may clarify, the rendering and the O&M cost thing are the things I received today. There's, I think, other plans. I believe those were received previously. Yes. Okay. So, this rendering, does it represent a difference from your submitted plans? Uh, I don't believe there's any changes to that rendering. So. The has changed a little bit, but other than that, the, the, uh, the overall concept it's just, is... You're just showing your turn radius at the ends? Yes, in the area where they'd pull down and be able to, you know, they'd pull in, they'd stop, make their delivery, and then turn around and back out from there. Madam Chair, if I may, is, yeah. there, is there any reason this couldn't have been done before the deadline so that we could actually review the packet? I mean, if it's just, if it's so simple, it seems like this could have been done last week and we could have reviewed it with the rest of our materials. I'm, I'm sorry to make a point of it. No, I just, it just I, I've got like seven stacks of paper that are coming in for multiple hearings tonight. And like, at some point we, we, we have to become more diligent when we submit things because it's just. That's our point. It, it, we simply just didn't, of all the things that we had to address, we didn't get to that turning radius uh, that was being worked on last week and and it didn't get completed until today. So that's why we didn't have it until today. So I certainly understand if that's yeah, and, and like I said, I know we've we've been the rules on this for a long time and I'm not trying to no, be I difficult just on this one, but no, we don't actually we don't actually bend the rules. Um, we do make people come back, but we do let people what what the fixed rules you are is that you can't even introduce it or talk about it if it hasn't met the deadline. That's the rule we bend, but we don't we, we have to have it reviewed. And there isn't a reason that it couldn't have been in on time. It just isn't. No, I, I agree. Okay. I'm All right even comfortable if you don't want to talk about it, to be honest, those particular pieces of information. If we want to just go over the stuff that data yeah. has reviewed. Yeah, how about so, we do so that? So I'd rather do that because we're at the end of the day, we're just going to talk about it again the next right. time. So right. just That's for efficiency, true. let's That's talk true. about the things that have been reviewed and, and this stuff will push off until it's submitted as part of the formal process. Is that okay? Yeah, perfect. Okay. I'll try to find a process question for the chair. Sure. So I was not able to make the last meeting that was on the 10th. But I did watch it today. Yes. Yes. But I do have a few questions. I know you guys went all through all the waivers. Are you going to go through them again? We did or? not vote the waivers. Right. Yes, so we are definitely going to vote them. Okay, so I have an opportunity to ask yes. questions. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Um, okay. So, did you want to start us off, or do you want to? Uh, well, if you want to go through the waivers again, I certainly can. Did we vote the way we did not vote the way we did? No, we did not vote. Through them one by one, and oh, you voted them one by one. And oh, you asked for how people felt uh, broadly. That's what it was. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Is there? Um, I think I may be operating off an old list. How many waivers are there? I have nine. I think I have an old list yes, in front nine of me. is correct. There were eight that were on, there were eight that we reviewed. Um, I have 10. Is that correct? You have 10? So in your memo, yep, the waivers are listed on the other yep. side. Oh, right. Do you know side. which page it is? The uh, 10. 10 of the memo. Thank you. <clears throat> Perfect. Thank you, John. This is my opportunity to say for all the folks at home, all the folks here, and John's wife when he watches it on tape, <laughs> he's doing an excellent job. <laughs> Seriously, John, Thank excellent you. job. Thank you. Go ahead. We can start with it. Okay. Yeah. So um, the um, requests, the first one, uh, at least on the list that we had submitted, was uh, cross a waiver to 
not to include cross sections of the street at 50 foot intervals. And I, if I'm remembering it correctly, um, we did not, as a board, we did not have um, issues with that as long as Beta was satisfied. Correct, and Beta had specifically asked for cross sections at 50, at station 50, station 1 plus 0, 0, 1 plus 50, and 5 plus 60. And we did provide those, and I believe Beta was satisfied with those cross sections. Um, any questions on that one, Dave? No. All right. Do people want to just talk about these for the last time and vote them? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I will entertain a motion to grant the waiver um, from uh, providing the cross sections at, of each street at 50 foot intervals. So moved. Excellent. Okay. Any further conversation or comment? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, the next one, uh, the board actually wasn't sure that we needed to ask for this as a waiver, so it's kind of up to you whether or not you want to. Um, we're not, we were asking for a waiver for the trees, to not show the trees that needed to be retained within the right-of-way, basically because there are no trees that are going to be retained within the right-of-way, which is why the board felt maybe we didn't need to ask for that waiver. Um, Do you feel better having it? Two, I, chair, I need yes. have one question about yes. it. Sorry. So, do you plan on having the trees within the five to twenty feet of the right of way, the street trees that are described in one of the other requirements? Because outside the right of way is where. Outside of the right of way. Right. Yeah, so we're not asking. So the tree. We're not asking for that. We're so not you'll asking have the, for a waiver for that. So you'll have the streets five to yeah, twenty I'm, feet from the road right of way, twelve feet apart. Yeah. Yep, they're, okay. sh they're actually shown on the record. Okay, cool. Yep. Anybody else? So should we just vote the waiver because it's requested? Yep. We don't have a problem with it? Yep. Okay. I'll entertain uh, a motion to approve the waiver for showing the trees that are to be retained within the right of way. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, go ahead. Uh, location of the proposed streetlights, we're requesting that the streetlights not be installed within the subdivision. Uh, again, we had a significant discussion about this, and I think the mm -hmm. overall um, feel was that we were not going to require the streetlights. Certainly, that's up for your vote tonight. Any, any comments or questions? So I do have mixed feelings on this, and I know that you now. guys did Actually. as well, because mm -hmm. I'm a fan of having some soft lighting throughout the neighborhood. How, you know, so street lights we've shot down, but um, street lamps and people's driveways I think is a good idea, but we haven't required that of anybody else. So. Can I ask the fire chief? <laughs> um, I'm having second thoughts about it because I'm very often a fan of no street lighting or, or, or forced lighting. Um, but I'm wondering about your feelings on it, just given the nature of the complex and lengthy driveways and so forth. Is it, is it something that you would see as a safety feature to have the driveways at least lit? So I guess my personal opinion would be any lighting always helps, but I don't know that I know it from a driven public safety like requirement mm -hmm. it doesn't it isn't like listed in some of the CMR pieces that I usually reference when I'm talking to you about access and mm -hmm. other areas um, I did talk with the uh, police a little bit about street lights and they were unaware of a requirement um, but they do know that there's um, a standard of in the more denser areas you see it you know urban areas definitely look for street lighting for safety uh, in Hawkington, we noted, we checked some of the subdivisions, some of the intersections they try to keep street lighting at, if, and it kind of depends on the, the flow and kind of a feel for it. Mm -hmm. But I don't know of a CMR or a regulation that drives it, especially for fire. Okay. okay. I, I will just say that from my perspective, um, I'm struggling a little bit with the design, although I love the piece of property and I love that there are going to be homes up there, just it's, you know, because of the complicated property. Um, and I feel like if there's going to be lighting, we almost want to include it so that we can keep it from being 
going up to the sky. Yeah. yeah, being overly excessive. But so I'm I'm actually having a little bit of a flip flop on the lighting feeling. Just a bulb coming. Mm -hmm. So I do put my money where my mouth is because I didn't have one in my when my house was built. But I I dug the trench by hand, a hundred feet, mm -hmm. and had the electrician come in and wire it. So I mean I'm a really big fan and. The driveway lamps, I think, I would support that. Yeah. I'm, I'm going back to street lighting. Um, I think the homeowners themselves can um, deal with their trenching and their, their lights and hopefully, and hopefully provide ones that are down um, lights and respectful. Um, I'm not for full-blown street lights, but I just feel the, the direction that they're going in and the length of the driveways that I think as far as just a pathway wayfinder um, and for, for public safety, that it, it's not a, like a hard, there's no hard rule, but it's the changing slopes of this, you know, site, um, which I still would love to see some 3D modeling, because I know it's possible. But we're talking about lighting. But we're talking about lighting. So that, it, that street lighting could be located where there aren't excessive hills or excessive and and only in moderation so that cars can can navigate um, and um, say and trucks and and safety equipment can figure out where they're going to if someone's in a in need so through the chair can I ask that for a clarification yeah so Deb, you said street lighting but I think you mean driveway lighting right because street lights are 20 feet telephone pole high whereas dri driveway well, lighting are more like eight feet like I don't know. I don't think we've always approved um, major highway street lights. I'm talking about smaller baller lights. I'm thinking about stuff that would be friendly to the dark sky um, community. Um, just something as a wayfinder, whether it's um, at the end of the driveway, on the street, you know, different driveways. Um, I just think humanistically, um, it's very important whether it has their address numbers on it or whether it, um, you know, is at a periodic separation. Um, I, I, that would be my vote. It would be for some kind of guidance for us to, to give them um, and have them come back with, you know, some, something. Um, so, hold on one second. Um, go ahead. So I actually have a question to the chair for, for John. Perfect. Because the, the waiver that's requested, as I look at it here, it only says that they must identify the location of proposed streetlights. And I was just looking for what the language is that we actually ask for in our bylaws around streetlights, because at the end of the day, from, from my take, you know, our job should be to enforce the, the, the bylaws that are in existence. And if there's a good reason to, to waive those, then so be it. But if, if even if we're all sort of personally we don't like streetlights, then the right solution is to go <coughs> change the bylaw that addresses streetlights. So I, I don't know, John, if, if there's if you know where there's something in the bylaws that provides more clarity on what what we like, other than so just section five point four point one point y. One at a time. Off the top of my head, I don't know where it provides more clarity. I have to look into it. Okay. I'm just going to give me some yeah. input to John. Yeah. To help yep. So I did look through the rules and regs of the subdivision and didn't find anything, but I didn't go back to the zoning. What is this, agricultural? The zoning? Yeah. It is so it might be something in there, I don't know. I, but just to Jerry's point, I couldn't find anything either. But Robert, I think I might this, uh, hold just, on one second, Amy. Just so I'm clear, this is something I don't, I don't get to vote on. This. Uh, you don't get to vote on it, but you can weigh in and ask questions and make your opinion known. So the vast majority of Hopkinton that has neighborhoods like this, there is no street lighting. Like, I don't know why we would try to enforce something that the vast majority of town doesn't have. It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, it's a dead end. It's not like there's people that need to walk to business or where there's going to be that type of environment. It's a dead end. Like. Yeah. Okay, we, it, it is essentially in the bylaw, so we just have to confront it each time. That's why we okay. deal with it. But um, I have a tendency to lean your way, Amy. I guess I was going to suggest that. Um, so we're just supposed to re require the location of the proposed streetlights. It doesn't say they have to be uh, so many feet tall or how many feet apart. So I was going to suggest maybe we don't waive the location yet, but suggest 
that they do some lower level lighting just for wayfinding at each house. I was just, that's what I had that's, asked yeah. the, the client if um, he would be amenable to doing some sort of um, like, a, like a more driveway, something you would see typically along a driveway at, um, so that it, you can find each house yeah. available, but, um, but not, you know, not necessarily street lights. Right. Yeah. I, I, I think would be comfortable. Could be very nice. I would be supportive of that yeah. as well. Yeah, me as well. So, so um, motion related. Right, or if you might craft it, but something it's actually that we would well, uh, if you can decide if that's if that's street lighting or well, we're gonna we agree that that's what we all uh, seem to like, but we're not gonna, I think we're not gonna waive the 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 providing the street lights within the subdivision, right? We're not gonna waive that. So I would feel, if I may, more comfortable yeah. with waiving the street lights right. and putting some verbiage in there about driveway lighting. That's what I was going to suggest. Because if you don't waive that, it, it I think may come across as we're supposed to be providing street lighting. Okay. So could we waive it, the location of the pro street lights with the condition that low lighted driveway lights would be provided yes. instead? Um, and we we need to see them, right? The planning board yeah. would have they to would show where they would be. Yeah. Yeah. Show them uh, I wouldn't waive the word street because I think once you start to put in driveway, then you're talking about the individual owner's preference. And I would say that the developer would have more control over the dead end street at the start of the driveway. So I would be more in favor for low level lighting, low level lighting um, off the street at the end of a driveway would be more instructive. So. I think that's what I meant at, at, okay. at the driveways. Right? So how about how about you give us? I, I really liked the way you said it for for wayfinding. Right. So we would waive the requirement to provide street lights within the subdivision on the condition that low level wayfinding lights be provided at the end, <coughs> end of every driveway. Okay. Is that right? Yeah. And at the entrance to the and, neighborhood. And we would and we'll provide a plan that shows with you the locations. Okay. I'd ask that they be dark sky compliant. <laughs> Absolutely, you can yeah. ask that. Yeah. So, Definitely. so just to con con clarify though, the, the, the waiver that's being requested is just that you're showing the location of the proposed street lights on the plan. That's it. No, so it's from providing street lights within the subdivision. That's what I'm not, I'm not, to be honest, based on your question, I'm not sure that your, that your bylaws require street lighting. Your bylaw requires that we show you where the street lighting is going to be. Okay. Uh, I don't, that's, I guess it's an interpretation and it's up to you guys how to yeah. do Location so of proposed street lights. Okay, so if we require the location of the proposed street lights, I guess it's implicit that we are expecting street lights. <clears throat> okay. Friendly modification to the amendment? Uh, throw it out there. Not to exceed 10 feet in height? I think it's premature. But they're going to bring it back to us. Right? They're going to bring back the plan to us. But uh, I wouldn't think ten, they needed to be yeah, monster slides. Ten, ten I mean. feet is, I was thinking five. Well, lower, I'm okay yeah. with lower. I just don't want to see the big ones. Six. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's fine. I yeah. just don't want to see the big ones. But when the plan comes in, yes. Indirect, yeah. Indirect. Yep, I'm fine with that. All right. Um, so uh, Amy has made a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Is there any further discussion? All right, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. All right. Side slopes. Uh, side slopes on the three to one max. Uh, again, this basically allows us to minimize the amount of, um, of clearing that we have to do in order to construct the road um, because there are there's a lot of steep areas here. Mm -hmm. um, trying to catch up to the grading uh, using three to one, uh, just it takes up a third more space than if we only do two to one. Um, so that's why we're asking. I think it's in keeping with the open space bylaw to minimize the area that we're um, that we're clearing in order. Um, I'm amenable to that conversation too, but I see that um, Beta needed you to define the limits where this is necessary, and that has been done. Correct. Okay. Yes. I just had a question. I'm 
I don't know if you can answer this or not, but I'm curious if the original submission for the 24 units in the loop road, if that had more or less of an impact on the um, on the slide slopes than the, the current plan. I'm sure, and I don't know specifically, but I'm sure just by the sheer length of the road uh, that it would have applied to more areas than, than this does. Okay, so, so fair to say that, that, that the impact in this, in the current proposal is, is most likely less than it was. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I will entertain a motion to uh, waive the requirement on the side slopes as requested. So moved. Second. Is there further discussion? Further discussion. Yeah. If we're making the slope steeper on the side of the road in various areas, how many areas is it? It's just one strip and it's about 100 feet long. Does that make it less passable by someone walking on the street? No, it's, it's on the shoulder off to the side. The one area that we're discussing is right up against where the existing Whisper Way is that exceeds the slopes. Cost. The existing current slopes are greater than what the subdivision rules allow. So what we need to do is to flatten that out, I need to grade a little bit more, which pushes us closer to the town forest. So it's just that one section that is uh, two to one, which is less than, you know, it's, it's not a... And, so, and we're, making, we're making the overall road. So right now, it's, it's already greater than two to one, or it's already at least, two to, at one. least two to one. And, <coughs> and it's, you know, passable. We've all, everybody's been it's on walking. sidewalk, but we've all walked on the street. Uh, on the existing Whisper Way, and then okay. we're going to be, you know, upgrading existing Whisper Way, okay. with, you know, so it'll be even safer than it already is. is, is okay, so the 24-foot width of the drive will provide safety if someone needs to meet somebody at well, the end it, of the road. Yeah, plus this is out, this, these slopes are outside of not only the pavement, but also outside of the sidewalk. Okay, all right. Any other comments? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Um, the disturbance to the natural topography. Uh, again, we have, um, and this is primarily because of the way existing Whisper Way does not meet the, uh, it, it, doesn't, it exceeds the maximum slopes at the entrance. Uh, so trying to get the new road to meet the required slopes requires that we fill more than eight feet to facilitate the crossing at the Colonel Pool uh, wetland right at the beginning. So we're constructing two retaining walls. Okay. Uh, any questions or comments from the board? So, yes. Yeah. So, if you're constructing retaining walls, are the retaining walls on the upside of the wetlands or the downside of the wetlands? The upside. So the wetlands will be below the road. And, and will the area. so will these berms have weep holes, and will water be coming through them from the road? And you know, are there any concerns of salt or different so types of? There, there will not be any water coming from the road surface. That'll all be collected by the drainage that we've uh, okay um, designed to treat the salt and, and other okay items. So, and the, the conservation commission has reviewed this plan thoroughly, and I think it's close to. That was going to be my next yet. question. <laughs> when do you see the Conservation Commission? Tomorrow. Oh, big night. For um, one of the things I don't see here that would prevent um, granulars from coming through is I don't see any filter fabric. I don't see any landscape fabric. Is, is that wrong? So a, a wall of this height has to be, um, first of all, needs a building permit and needs to be designed by and stamped by a structural engineer. Okay. So we're showing it 
um, just for uh, display purposes and how it affects the, the grading uh, for the rest of the site. It, it, okay. The wall itself can't be built based on just our plans. A structural engineer that will certainly be... We'll add to the packet after yes. once this is given approval. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, I'll entertain a motion uh, to approve uh, the waiver from disturbance to natural topography as requested. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any further comments? Um, I just, uh, in a long list of waivers, um, I, it, it's really, it's really because of the wetland impact that you have to ask for this. For that one, uh, it's a combination of the of that and and the ex the existing um, drive the existing roadway. The existing roadway. The existing roadway was built according you know built according to the correct slopes that are in your bylaws. Then we would be happy to not gotcha. bring in fill. But it it then means that you're doing you're doing less disturbance. And yes. Okay. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody no? I'm a no. Uh, anybody abstaining? Okay. Sorry. We have, uh, I I'm a no. Thank you. Um. All right. Uh, disturbance to natural topography. Uh, what? So there's three that are disturbance to natural topography. Oh, okay. A, B, and C. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. right. So this one is a waiver from the construction of roads, stormwater management systems, driveways, pipes, or other infrastructure construction all on a land area which slopes at a grade of 25% or more. So this is uh, similar to not the last one, but the previous one where we t where we were asking for the waiver for the side slopes from the road to minimize disturbance. This is specific to the detention basins. Uh, in order to minimize disturbance, uh, we're also asking to construct those at a two to one slope instead of a three to one slope. Uh, and I believe the only um, comment that came back from Beto had to do, or maybe it was just a discussion point, but um, similar to like for our septic system, we have to have a three to one slope, or we have to include a impervious barrier to make sure that the water in the septic system, or in this case in the detention pond, can't migrate through because there's less soil. Uh, so we're proposing to include um, the impervious barrier. Uh, in with this waiver. Okay. Um, is, is that conditioned in there? I lose track. It's, I, I don't think it's, it's included on the plans. So okay. I guess in that fact it is. So can I ask a yep. question? Yep. So I'm looking at your plans. I'm looking at um, plan G9932, and it shows the wetlands, and it shows a hard line around the wetlands. Can you show me where the filter fabric is going to go at a two-to-one slope? So it's not, it's not filter fabric, it's an impervious barrier. Okay. So oh, so it's, so it's actually a, a plastic. plastic. Yes. Okay, okay. Where does that go? It goes in the center of the berm. So you picture your berm being a trapezoid, and it goes right down the center. Do you have a detail drawn to that? Can you point me to it? It's on one of the detail sheets. It's on the detail sheet of the possibly the first one. First detail sheet. The detail sheet would be at the end. Yeah. Oh, wait. On the bottom left hand corner. There should be a I mean, beta is looked at. Yeah, I just, what, what I'd like to know is I'm not a real fan of plastic, and I'm not a real fan of fi 
fan of slopes that are in excess around wetlands. Um, I'm just wondering what is the effect of this plastic? How deep, that's why I was looking for the detail, but I can't seem to find it. How deep is this plastic? It goes a foot into natural grade. And the, again, the Conservation Commission is reviewing this and their only concern really is the wetland protection, so. Um, and so where would the, the two to one slope be in reference to the, it re where it's a minimum of it's definitely a minimum of 50 feet outside of the wetlands because the detention basin itself is not allowed to be within 50 feet of the wetlands. I would, I would, I, I still am waiting for a definition of where that where that fabric's going. It's on sheet 10. Is the detail of it on the bottom left-hand corner of the earthen dike? Can I look at yours? Ten. This is, it's up there. I don't know if you want to point oh, out. Oh, sorry. <laughs> John, can you just confirm? Bottom left hand corner. Bottom left hand corner. There's a detail of the burn. Travis over there. Yeah. And so in real the, the plastic, essentially they build it and then they excavate out a base of it. Mm -hmm. And then they lay this. The line right down the center. So, the so okay, that's, the pl that's the plastic. That's the plastic. And then. What is the hard outline that's making the trapezoid? Uh, loam and seed. Loam and seed. Okay. And the loam and seed is what you're requesting the va the, the the variance or the waiver. Sorry. No, the the steepness of that slope. Right. Uh, of the of the loam and yeah. Of the loam and seed. Yeah. Sure. Um. I would say that I'm not comfortable with that. Um, we've been through some really pretty horrible building experiences where we're in the middle of the spring and we're trying to get a stabilized site um, and we have a lot of difficulty. Um, I would want to maintain it. I, I, first, I want to get ComCon's um, impression of it before I said anything. So that, that's so, kind of my concern. So you can condition it on their approval. We're not necessarily going to be able to require them to tell us what, how they feel about it. Okay, um, I would make it on condition of their approval. Um, so they're because of our, um, and then I, I would lean to other members to the, get their feelings as to how they feel um, yeah. with that slope. So yes. Can I just confirm that Beta was comfortable yes. with this change? I believe so. Yes. Okay. If Beta is comfortable with it, then I'm comfortable with it. Okay. Anybody else? I would ditto what Gary said. Okay. Um, can I, I am. Can I ask Phil a question? Just because he was What's okay with it, and because yeah, we, we did ask have Phil a question. Yeah, Phil, can I ask you a question? So when we, this is just in relationship to legacy, um, and we had, you know, the mud washout, and can you? Tell me, was that anything to do with the slope ratio um, and how in, during construction and sort of this barrier that should have been impervious? Is, is, is there anything that would indicate here a similar situation? So um, <clears throat> the, the situation legacy involves a lot of uh, poor soils that are um, with, with high fi fine content and high uh, Dissolvable or soluble um, soils. In this case, they're building a berm out of what I would presume would be uh, good gravel okay. um, and uh, a, uh, a suitable material to sustain uh, uh, a grade of two to one. Uh, okay. Two to one is kind of the maximum you want to go with a natural. Um, you could also provide require them to provide a matting on the on the slopes uh, that would you know uh, stabilize, make sure there's no erosion. Uh, but the barrier itself, so this this is a, they have a very you know, I, I, I've been going back and forth with Dan on this quite a bit because you know it, it is not an ideal situation to have. A, a, you know you you have that regulation for a reason. Um, however, in this case, there, there's very little opportunity because of 
uh, the wetland configurations, as, as uh, Elizabeth mentioned, that they got to stay out of the 50 foot, you know, area, and they've got to provide a certain volume, and they've got to, uh, and this is uh, at the ideal location for a basin. So there are many factors that are kind of dictating this kind of design. Um, okay. So provided they construct it well and they seed it well uh, and put the barrier in, I, I don't see any problem. Would, would, would matting be visually obtrusive? Would the, the seed come up through the matting? Is it that kind of matting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, erosion control matting. Is, I, I, they probably even have it, I would imagine, in detail. Um, not, I'm not sure. And the, yeah. it's cer again, certainly something that the Conservation Commission, um, whether or not it, it, we would probably end up using the matting one way or the other, because we, in order to get our certificate of compliance um, with the Conservation Commission, we're going to have to stabilize these slopes. If they're not stabilized, the Conservation Commission isn't going to grant us a certificate of compliance, and that's not. Do you have so any objection to specifically using the matter? No. Okay. All right. So, so can I? You can. Move Go to uh, grant this waiver with the condition that um, erosion control fabric is used. Yep. Yeah. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any up no's or any abstentions? So this is B. Seven. Uh, any opposed or any abstentions? Okay. Uh, disturbance in natural topography, uh, a waiver to provide side slopes at two to one when the maximum slope is three to one. Madam Chair. Yes. I believe this is just a repeat. Yes. It was just copied over, I guess, in the comment letter. Okay. 8.2.6a was... Was what we... Was four. Yeah. It just had a different title. That's why I said nine. Thank you. Yeah, they're okay. correct. I appreciate your help. All right. Um, stormwater basin embankments. So this is for... Um, a request to waive the requirement for the edge of the embankment being 25, a minimum of 25 feet from houses, property lines, and roadway. We're well over 25 feet from a house, um, but we are not from the property line. Um, I, I'm not sure that I actually understand why this is a requirement because we have situations where property lines go through um, a basin. It's it, the, the, where the line is of ownership is somewhat irrelevant, but um, it's nonetheless a uh, requirement. We met, met it to the greatest extent possible. Um, again, trying to get this basin in the area that makes the most sense from my functioning uh, perspective for drainage and also meeting all the setbacks to the wetlands. Um, this, this is the one thing that we felt was the, the lesser of the evils to ask for a waiver from. All right, um, any questions from the board? Phil, can I ask you why it would be a requirement to uh, at the property line in particular? So there may be there may be several uh, reasons. Uh, one is um, many places in, in, in uh, <coughs> small towns like this, you know, you have uh, requirements for septic systems, and you know there's going to be separation. You don't want to impact on a butter in terms of where you can put his septic system. Um, and, but also just to, you know, some, some towns have, you know, require detention basins be on separate lots, some, some towns, uh, so it's, uh, there may be, at the particular time that this was created, maybe it's a significant, um, you know, reason for this. Um, I don't, I don't know if, 
many towns that are, that are consistent with this kind of regulation. Um, so, okay. and just general guesses, I guess. Thank you. I appreciate your general guesses. All right. Uh, anybody have any questions, comments? Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve the waiver for the stormwater basin embankments. So moved. Sorry. Is that a second, Gary? No. Okay. Is there a I'm second? I'm sorry. I, I oh. Point of discussion. Oh, I need a second sorry. first. Second. Okay. There we go. Discussion. Sorry. We were just talking about spacing with regards to property lines, yep. which I think is the. Sorry, okay. It, it, it was, all right, never mind. I'm okay. good. Yep. Uh, all those in favor signify it by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions? Okay. Um, <clears throat> Uh, the requested waiver next is for the buffer areas. The applicant seeks a waiver from providing a 100-foot buffer at the perimeter of the site to separate and or screen the development from abutting properties. The proposed subdivision includes a roadway within 100-foot buffer of, of the project site on the southeast corner in order to minimize impacts to slopes greater than 25% and to accommodate the Board of Health septic system regulations. Beta notes that the new concept plans has a spur that connects to a parcel in the southeast corner. Oh, wait, this is. Oh, I was going to say, this is. The spur is no longer, right? Go ahead. I don't know. I, I'm I was just taking from the last letter. It may just yep. like carry over. Yep, go ahead and explain it. I don't, I'm not sure what this, this is another waiver. This is a waiver from zoning 210-113. Uh, C1 buffer areas. That's a hundred foot oh, yeah. buffer. So I'm not sure if that right applies. Uh, okay. You're going to need to explain because I don't know. Um, the spur is to allow access to the backland. Uh oh. Can you show us on the just a conceptual drawing here. Is there any areas that are asking for reduced uh, from 100 feet? Yep. This is one section that goes out to the back land to uh, there's five acres back here for any possible future use. Uh, and the other section is in this corner mm -hmm. right here where the existing whisper way comes through and ends right here. Oh, so what is the buffer accomplishing over here? Is that uh, on the southeast corner? What is the buffer again? Uh, we have, well, we're closer to uh, 195 in this area here, and then, um, but you know, nothing's going to be built in this area. We have, um, and then we have 100 foot here, we have 100 foot through all this area. So the, the main purpose of the 100 foot buffer is, I, I think, always been to, um, as a buffer to other uh, developments for your open space. Uh, that's why it's required mm -hmm. around the whole outside of it. Uh, in this particular case, we, there's only 495 and more open space around this uh, town open space. So we're really creating, the 100-foot the buffer is really a buffer to more open space. Um, right. So 
I'm not sure that it, it, it needs to be there the same way that it typically would. Um, we're, we're adding to the existing open space that's owned by the town and uh, extending it. We're just not extending it a full 100 feet in those two areas. Right, let me ask this, does um, granting the buffer uh, accommodate that spur in any way? I, I mean, I mean, do you need the buffer for? Yeah, that? the, yeah, this, because, uh, yes, you can't, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to have the spur there if the. So everything in our bylaws, the, the letter and the spirit of it is to not use open space development plans, subdivision plans to um, necessarily open up uh, other piece, big pieces of property that aren't being contemplated at the same time. So I have, a, I have an issue with that because we don't know what we're contemplating behind it. I would also say that it, what it does is it, you, it, that it loses the town's ability to access that area to expand the trail in any direction. Pass and repass. It, it's the, the buffer, the, hundred, the, the remainder of the buffer around the subdivision mm -hmm. is adjacent to town property. I'm, so I'm not sure that it really cuts anything off. So, so can I just clarify, the only places that you're requesting a waiver from this buffer are either abutting town property or abutting 495 property? There's, no, we're, there's the only place we're requesting the buffer. The um, waiver for the 100 foot, the waiver from we, the 100 foot requirement? Yes, it would either be 495 or town Forest. So in no place does that request a waiver of the 100 foot buffer impact private property? Uh, well, tech, no, because technically that's private property. What do you, I'm sorry, what's that? B below the little, this, uh, this, this, part. this property down here is not town property. That's part of the okay. So the answer is yes then? It I does impact private property. Yes. Okay. Yes. I don't support it then. It's owned by the applicant. I don't know if that makes a difference to you, or owned by the. No, I mean in that case, in that case, the applicant could put it all on the table to contemplate all at the same time, so we knew what we were talking about. For me, that's my. I agree. With you. That's my position. Anybody else? So can we just defer on that particular uh, we can. request? Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, we have seven more minutes. Um, there is a request for a waiver on the lot frontage depth. The applicant seeks a waiver from providing 60% six, of lot frontage at a frontage depth. Well, anyway, I'll let you explain it. Uh, this, so typically on a uh, open space subdivision, the idea is that we reduce the setbacks um, yeah. to cluster everything close to the road yeah. um, to maximize your open space on the outside. It's just in this particular case, because of the steepness uh, of the slopes out there, um, we're actually clustering the houses out away from the road. Mm -hmm. um, so it, does, so the, the shape of the lot, obviously we need to have more space around where the house is rather than up by the road. So um, it just the uniqueness of this property uh, and we're still maintaining the concept of uh, minimizing disturbance. We're just doing it in a slightly different way. Um, by moving it away. So it doesn't, the lot shape factor, this is the width that's up close by the road, um, doesn't um, 
facilitate what we're, what the way we're uh, developing this open space. And just to clarify, this is, John, I'm looking your way. We, this is something we're entitled to waive. That's what I just, yeah, just thought of that. Um, I'm looking into that. Okay. So Any other questions? I just have a question for Phil. And I, I know we've asked you a couple times as to what the intent of these bylaws might be, but specific to this one on lot frontage depth, any thoughts on why we require a certain lot width deeper into the lot? All right, so they, uh, I, th I think the intent is really to, as, as Elizabeth, is to have kind of uniform lots and have uh, the opportunity to have all, uh, disturb as less land as possible. So, however, in this case, they, they have a unique situation in that, in that they have an existing road um, and that they can only go a thousand feet and one side of the road is not buildable. They can't use the frontage on that side of the, the, the west side of the road because they don't own the land. So they, they have very little frontage. They can only be a thousand feet. So they can only have, you know, they got this fairly sizable piece of land. And, and you know, so they're, they're really restricted in terms of the amount of width. And, width, and that's, so if, if they get this waiver, then they can build what they want. Otherwise, they're going to be, I, I don't know how many lots you can yeah. probably reduce to six or so. I don't know. I, I mean, I understand it would be very We're going to go back to John. John has. So just to answer, I think, the two questions. So uh, lot frontage depth can be waived by the planning board. It's specifically mentioned. <clears throat> the whole point of lot frontage depth is to not have pork chop lots, uh, flag lots. However, it is provided that the planning board can waive it as part of the open space thing, which means it's tacitly allowing pork chop lots and common driveways to achieve that type of development where it's clustered in one area. It might not meet the, the setback and other dimensional regu regulations as set forth in zoning bylaw, but in this district, it's a different type. When of they did ours, as we all know, Muriel famously lives on a pork chop lot. You do? I do. Um, <laughs> Um, we had our folks have to have an uh, our neighbors have to have an easement through their property so that we actually have the accepted frontage on North Street. Is that? Yeah, I don't, everybody I, has everybody has their everybody has the required frontage. It's okay. It's just that it's once the you come shapes off of the lot. Once you come off of the road. Yeah. Yep. Some of them, for instance. Yeah, see, for us, we're, we're a straight shot off, so we this, have it the whole this way. This has the required, yeah. and I'm not sure that this is a particular one, but um, this has the required frontage here, but when you come back to the front yard setback, yep. it's typically where you would have a house in a, in, a, in a traditional subdivision here, much closer to the front yard setback, there's a required width. Yep. The lot. Yep. And you can see here this next down and then it opens up where the house is. Yep. Yep. So I'll be candid with you. The reason that I'm struggling with this one a little bit and everybody else can weigh in is that it is a precedent setting decision, I think. And we need to be sure that we love this kind of idea in open space developments. Um, and I, I understand. I understand the property. I have trod upon it myself a couple of times, and I think that um, personally, if I'm personally making the decision, I think I like the fact that they're going to be really unique little lots all tucked away. Um, I just want, the, from, from my perspective, I want the board to consider how much we're going to love this on any any lot. So, just uh, one of the things that Phil mentioned that I think is in particular unique about this property, and not necessarily um, applicable to other open space subdivisions is the fact that we're dealing with an existing roadway yep. that is that runs along and to be it actually currently runs on town property, not within the right of way. We're moving it out of town property and into the right of way. So as you said, we're losing all of this frontage 
that um, we would not have typically, there's, you're not going to come across another situation where you have an existing road that runs along a property line, is, is my point. So from a precedent setting standpoint, I think you have a little bit of leverage to say this is a unique situation. I'll let other people weigh in. I, anybody else have thoughts or concerns? We do have to open the next public hearing in seconds. Um, through the chair? Yes. Thank you. Um, I believe that, you know, as, as we've seen various iterations of this um, potential development, that the developer has, um, has done a good job in balancing the um, preservation of existing trees, um, the preservation of wetlands, um, particularly the not, not moving the existing road into you know, a uh, wetland area, but using the existing road and right of way. Um, and it is, and I don't believe this is precedent setting because this is very specific to this property in terms of, um, in terms of the limitations, but also what um, the developer and the planning board have managed to do in terms of preserving a lot of open space and um, natural features. Did you want to say something? Yeah, I, I, I don't get to vote on this issue, so. Um, but in general, I think uh, diminishing our current zoning bylaws in terms of land use in this regards, not what we want to do as a board. I would not be a fan of it. I, if I could vote, I would vote no. Dave, do you have any thoughts? Just a, a general question. Are there limitations on the length of the driveways that we have? Is that? I, I, so hold on one second. Sure. I just asked yeah. you that question, but I forgot to open the public hearing. Um, I'll entertain a motion to open the public hearing on the commercial photovoltaic solar facility at Zero Wood Street. Um, it's a special permit and a stormwater management plan. And it will be uh, continued to after the conclusion of this conversation. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any? Okay, perfect. Go ahead. I'm sorry. So I just had a concern because about the length of the driveways, and I think you do as well, and the whole layout. And for a safety point of view, I'll lead to that. But when we had the, the dual entrance, I, I felt more comfortable with emergency vehicles that if a tree fell across the road on one side, you can get to all the houses. My concern here is if a tree falls across this road, you're not going to be able to get to these 10 or 11 houses. So I guess I would look to the fire chief <laughs> to get some feedback on that. Can I suggest that we, that I, I don't know if you believe that that is the same issue as the frontage depth requirement? Yeah, I was just saying it was a general concept. Yeah, and I, and, and I just, I know you guys want to move on well, my, to the next hearing. Well, my question was to the chair, sorry. Yeah. That, um, is there a limit on the driveways too? Is that another waiver that we have to pass? Because there's nothing really where I can make my point as far as waivers, as far as safety so I think that somebody correct me if I'm wrong I think the answer is is that the waiver on driveways is for common driveways not for the length okay. so if you have a big parcel of land and you want to build your house in the back then you can do that but we didn't have that as one of our nine the common it driveways, is. Right? it's coming oh it's coming oh okay. it's coming okay thanks yep it must have been laid out on <laughs> so what did you want to propose I don't think there is a limit there is no limit on length. It's for the common to share driveways, right? Yeah, that's. It's not a waiver. Oh, it's you're right. I'm sorry. It's it's. it's there's a separate it's special easement. Permit. Special separate. Yeah, special I, okay. I appreciate the correction. Yes. It's, I don't believe it's a separate special permit. Right. It's captured in the open space. Okay. Special permit. Yep. I was, because they're allowed in it's open not a space. It's, it's not, not a waiver. waiver. You're right. Okay. Um, I would, if we're going to put off deciding a few other things, I would, I would be in favor of letting this sit a little bit, um, and seeing how we, how things kind of shake out. Um, I, I really appreciate how hard and how difficult this site is, and I agree with Mary that 
the builder has gone above and beyond. Um, and I also agree with David that there's some concerns um, with the driveway length um, due to its unusual setting. Um, so, you know, if we're going to be waiting a little bit on some of the other decisions, I'd be in favor of letting this one sit a little bit. Because I think that, that one of the problems with it is that the huge track, the huge front area becomes unusable for the town. And then it becomes this very thin swath, you know, swath of land around it. And um, I have mixed feelings about so that. So I don't, I don't have an issue with us, you know, passing over the buffer one because that, quite honestly, is a pretty <coughs> easy fix for us, if, depending on what we want to do. Uh, however, the lot frontage stuff, if you're not willing to um, <coughs> to grant that waiver, that's a significant amount of work that we would like to accomplish between now and the next meeting um, to, to try and reconfigure the lots so that we meet the, the lot frontage depth. So, um, yeah, Ron. Yeah. Come, um, come, come forward, just so folks at home can hear from these. So on the lot frontage um, issue, we we have done we have developed a plan that what allows us to do that to to to, do, to, to conform with the shape. And when we do that, we have to go through wetlands with driveways. We it it, it just it kind of makes a mess of things. It it moves things around, but it's definitely doable. But um, and in this in the in your regulations, um, it. I mean, they anticipate this may be weighed by the planning board in, in order to achieve the purpose of this article, and um, which is landscape, which is preservation of the of the wetlands and anything that we can preserve. So I just, I don't think that there's a. I think, I th I think that they 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 wrote this with with something like this in mind, not not something. It's not something that's. That's out of bounds of what, what why they wrote the, why they wrote it this way. I mean, it's a, the exact fit for, for this situation. <coughs> Again, we can we can do that. We can make those those boxes, but it's just not as easy as just making a box. It slides everything around. And so so does conforming to I mean. Does conform into that lot frontage depth? Does that impact the number of houses that you can build on this property? No, no, it does not. we can still get the, the, the ten lots or the whatever. We can still get the same number of lots. Well, um, it just it just makes it more difficult, and it doesn't. I don't think it's going to be visually. No one's going to know where the property lines are. It's it's wild terrain out there. It's. Okay. It's not an exercise that I'm looking forward to doing it's because it's, it's, um, it's just an exercise and it's really not going to change anything other than add more, more burden, uh, more conservation work, more wetlands filling, or altering. Yeah, so I, I, I'm very torn at, as I sort of laid out. And for me personally, I think that it probably takes um, what could be a really lovely configuration and makes it a little bit less lovely as well um, and you know tucked away and intentional and and those kinds of things um, it's just uh, so the flip side of it just the flip side of it is is that that the lot is challenging because of wetlands and fixed you know the topography and and fixed um, structural impediments, you know, man-made impediments and so forth is, is really, I don't mean it to sound bad, but it's really not our, our problem necessarily to fix, it's the developer's problem to fit within. Um, and I just, um, I do candidly worry that, I'm, I'm trying to figure, I'm, tr I'm trying to think for myself how I justify making a waiver in this case that doesn't necessarily mean I'm gonna be asked to waive it on a lot of, Open space Again, I think in particular with this project, the fact that half we're losing half of the road. 
that that's a significant. So so you're not losing the, the road is the road. You're not you're losing, losing half of the frontage. Yeah, but that's <coughs> that's the property you you bought, right? I get it. I, I, but, I understand. Yeah. If, if I may, though, that might impact the total length of the road. No. But no, it impacts the it impacts if we had if we had twice as much frontage to work with, we would have twice as much play to move right. our yes. frontage right. and to move our width. We're we're losing not quite half, but close to half of the width that we're that we have to play with. And and I'm not saying that it's not our responsibility to figure out how to do it. I'm just saying I, that I, I know and I, I'm is, not being flip. This is this is unique to this situation. If this wasn't an existing road and we weren't trying to use the existing road, we wouldn't come, you would not. As an engineer, the, absolutely never do we bring a road along a property line for that very reason. You lose half of your frontage and half of your width. So it's unique. As far as a precedent is concerned, that's what, I'm, I'm saying that that's the most significant piece to I understand. Here. Thank you. Um, okay. Anybody else have any um, questions or comments, or does someone want to make a motion? I was going to just say that I think I feel comfortable granting the waiver due to the uniqueness of the road, the existing road, and not disturbing as much wetlands. But anyway, I would, be, I would make a motion to approve the waiver. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay. Thank you. Um, is there further discussion on the waiver? So uh, all those in favor of the waiver signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. 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 So that's a tough one. Um, when is the next time um, we have space? So this is a good time to introduce quickly, and we'll talk about it at length towards the end of the meeting, but we are going to try this system where we continue public hearings to the date, similar to what the Board of Appeals does in town and what the content does in town, and not set a time so that we have a more fluid ability to work with the agenda. So the meeting starts at 7.30, so it would be posted to August 12th at 7.30. So we'll still be posting a time in the future? Not a specific time, we'll, no. We'll be posting an agenda yes. that, that yes. you'll know where you are in the agenda. Yes, thank you. But for the purposes of the public hearing, um, it's 7.30. And, okay. and do we have to post out, do we have to include decision dates, Kobe? Just for the definitive. So, and then the, that would make uh, the definitive subdivision decision uh, for the 19th of August. Do I have a motion on, to that effect? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? And the 19th is, a, is acceptable to the applicant for the decision? Before we close the hearing, can I make a comment? We just continued it, actually. Oh, we just continued it? Okay, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. We'll so back. we're going to, if anybody wants to take a five-minute bio break, this would be the moment. You know, could there be air conditioning in this place? <laughs> so on that note, yes. the foreman has said that we may have to move the planning board meetings to the library because Bill's Pizza has been complaining about people parking in the parking lot for these meetings. Okay. So the library has air conditioning. <laughs> Nice. Actually, it's freaking cold over there, as I recall. You meant to park in the Bill's Pizza Lot? Not lots? anymore. For town purposes? Not anymore. Hmm. Hmm. Um, Good thing that um, item that I approved at this time, we can have the additional parking over here and across the street, right? We'll see. We'll see. 
Um, so, but we just said for ta for town hall, right? For Did we say it was at town hall? No, we didn't. We didn't. Don't so, but okay. don't we have to do that? In the agenda, we can we can do that. We can set a time. Yeah. And we really meeting. shouldn't be saying where at the meeting because we if, don't even know yet. If it's not scheduled and we can't get the room, then that would be a problem. Okay. We always have the room, but okay. We're going to, we may not. Even yeah. Want no, we'll figure. As long as it's legal, I'm happy. We How about may not that? We want to say at the meeting what time it starts because if something comes up, we'll <laughs> start it at seven o'clock instead of seven thirty. We're kind of bound by the seven thirty. So I'm going to push back hard. People have to know when they have to. It'll arrive. be there on the agenda. Nope. So when we announce it, it's hard enough to follow. I don't know. You you must have done this as a as a as a somebody watching from home. Different. I things. always look at the agenda right before the meeting. Always. Yeah. So for the nineteenth, we might have air conditioning. For the yeah. <laughs> for the twelfth. Yeah, he just told me this at the end of the day today. Isn't that so. the twelfth? Is the twelfth is the meeting? Nineteenth is the decision. Right. Yeah, the twelfth is the meeting. Okay. Wait, what meeting is the twelfth? Our meeting. In August. And the oh, August. I was talking about July. We, I don't know when he wants us to move it, so he, okay. it may right. even be the 22nd that we move it. Okay. Uh, All right. It was just kind of an offhand comment. That bills pizza. I'm going to go over and have a conversation. <laughs> oh, okay, so we, for the All 22nd, right. we probably will have to be here. For the uh, oh, mm. Yeah. Okay. Disconnect these two. That's the original plan. The road. Yeah, they want this. <laughs> okay, what is this? Uh, do I don't have a folder for this? So we can keep track of what we Yeah, beautiful out there, huh? Where the high ceilings, hot air would rise, and it's just Wouldn't nice that, and cool. Wouldn't seriously? Down. That's just too much. The hot air is just overcoming them. <laughs> yes, but it's, it's yeah. funny how the, the, the number of people in the room. Yeah. I guess it gets crowded. It, it, it makes you appreciate how much difference. heat it adds. Oh yeah. yeah. All right. So um, we're just gonna wait two more minutes for Deb. Um, a process-wise. We need to give them at least a little bit of time to get going here. So we're going to go into probably 9.15. So I think Deb can catch up. Um, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, just. Yeah, um, and we have to do this. Um, so we are gonna we're gonna um, compress our what starts at nine for us. So we're gonna give you a half hour to introduce the project and get started. Um, just process wise, we have an outline that we customarily use, um, and so starting fresh with a new hearing, it's an introduction and review by the applicant, then uh, staff and consultant reviews. Um, and then we usually take we take some time from the planning board perspective and also the members of the public who are interested here to add to the agenda or the outline if there's any areas that they want to want to add. Um, so if you um, would like to get us started by introducing yourselves and the project, that would be great. Sure. Well, thank you for having us this evening. My name is Matt Swansburg. I work for Borrego Solar. I am the project developer for the solar project that we are proposing this evening. This is Brandon Smith. He's our civil engineer, and he is the smart one at the table that will walk us through the, the plans and the project in more detail. Uh, we appreciate John, the town planner, uh, facilitating a peer review that has actually already been completed, and we appreciate that the peer reviewer, Beta, has actually already turned a peer review report around to us um, in such a short amount of time. We received the peer review last week, just before the holiday. Uh, so candidly, we haven't had um, an opportunity to really dig into it, to revise our plans, or to comment on uh, what is in this report. So this evening, we're uh, looking for the opportunity to give you a high level 
summary of the project and to answer any questions that the board might have as well as uh, the public. And I'll let Brandon take away, uh, take it away from here. All right. Just so you know, I'm look. I'm not looking past you. I'm looking at whatever you're speaking to behind you. Okay, great. Um, I'll just yeah. I'll start with going over a, a high level overview of the proposed solar plant. So you may be familiar with other solar facilities. Very familiar with other solar facilities. <laughs> so this project is proposed on a parcel that's currently being used for a variety of purposes. Uh, Greenhouses up north, some gravel, sand and gravel operations in the east, I'm sorry, in the west. Uh, so our proposed array is effectively split up into three separate arrays. Um, the north covers that greenhouse area, the west that covers that uh, sand and gravel operation, and then the east, which is mostly wooded, some open areas, um, but primarily, prim primarily dominated by there's also um, a cell tower on the site that we're kind of up adjacent to, um, located here, so we're working with that. Uh, generally, these solar facilities are solar modules mounted on galvanized steel racking that's anchored into the soil using screw foundations, um, so very little earth disturbance, no concrete foundation or anything required. Module racking. Um, that's all connected back down to, in this, uh, for this project, with two electrical equipment pads, the transport, transformers, inverters um, located at these two. There's one for the south here, and then there's this larger one kind of in the west, which actually also houses our energy storage um, equipment uh, batteries. Uh, that in turn is then connected to the interconnection point, which is at Wood Street, down to the south here. Um, just to kind of locate you, the Wood, Wood Street is to the south, 495 to the east, and then um, <laughs> the That was rude of the planning board chairman. <laughs> Sorry. Whitehall Brook uh, runs to the west. Um, we have submitted, so there will be some tree clearing required for this section. Uh, would like to point out that these areas that are disturbed, we are proposing soil restoration uh, in those areas because we are you know, so close to the back. Some compacted and sandy soil. Um, our access to the facility, so this red line here represents the perimeter fence. The seven foot high galvanized chain link fence. Uh, we do have a vehicle gate to access inside these in adjacent to these equipment areas uh, for maintenance uh, you know, and potential replacement equipment. The access is actually via an existing road on Mechanic Street off of Wood Street. So there's no, no work being done on the access road here. It's in good shape. Uh, Gravel, you know, hard packed uh, sand in places. Really, don't work. The main work for for access is we are we do need to install a, a turnaround here um, to allow emergency vehicle maintenance vehicles to be able to get into the equipment area and turn around and leave the site. Um, our interconnection is via underground as much as possible. We are proposing uh, underground up until there is a. a water line easement here. We're actually going to be working with that, the owner of that easement um, <coughs> proposed to trench through that, but there may be issues we may need to go overhead for that, but we are going to be underground everywhere else. What may have to go overhead? The utilities? The utilities, the interconnection, the electrical line, um, just in that, because of that water easement. Uh, at the interconnection, we are Everything's trenched or pad mounted up to the uh, let me go up here to the interconnection area. And this one in Wood Street here is Mechanic Street. Our interconnection is down 
here. Um, there's an existing garage that we're basically utilizing some of that park and the space to mount um, pad mounted equipment. You know, again, we're making effort, every effort to keep everything pad mounted underground. Uh, so this is all the utility equipment, meters, transformers, um, and there will be some proposed uh, poles for the equipment that we cannot pad mount. And that will then So that's a high level overview of the project it's, um, at this point. Okay. Thank you. John. So, uh, reviewing this application, the array appears to meet the requirements of the bylaw in terms of um, dimension setbacks and whatnot. Um, the array is located on previously disturbed land, however, there is some clearing that's still needed, so we would recommend minimizing that as much as possible um, and we have not received it is not required but it would be, bene it would be beneficial to have this provided uh, anticipated views from Wood Street or Mechanic Street um, either renderings existing photographs that type of thing to see how the array would look from the street and from neighbors properties uh, to the extent practicable and one other thing to note is that this is chapter 61 land um, I don't know the ownership status at this point. Are you guys purchasing it? Are you preparing to lease it? We're going to be leasing just the leased premises inside the, the perimeter fence that we're showing. So, scenes you bring that up, I'm going to, I have a direct question that I think the lawyers need to answer because Chapter 61A land is protected. Um, and enjoys a lower tax rate for specific reasons. And I don't know that any of that is meant to cover commercial solar photovoltaic installations. Um, and so typically the town would have a right of first refusal if it was being sold. It just is a complicated question I want a specific answer to. Yep, and I'll talk to town council about that. Um, yep. However, just to, to continue on this comment, yep. the select board has heard from Borrego uh, and discussed it at their their meetings um, and they did express an interest in purchasing the property should uh, the situation arise uh, and they stated that the land is uphill from town wells and abuts the town's fruit street property mm -hmm. um, however if the land is developed as a solar array the impact of the well fields and fruit street land may be limited compared to other types of development so that should be taken into consideration mm -hmm. Yeah, so I appreciate that. I've read that, but I don't, I don't, and I don't know that they didn't. I don't know that they asked that direct question about whether or not Chapter 61A property protection can stay in place. Yeah. As far as um, and then I don't know what it means as far as the town being able to assert their rights if the use is changing. Um, because what happens for anybody who doesn't know, if the town does not exercise its rights to buy the property, the town does enjoy the benefits of those tax dollars coming back into the town to utilize. It's just an interesting question. Jeff, sorry, I read something online, mm -hmm. paying more it's worth, but I think there's something like you have to go back five years and pay the difference in the tax Here rate. Is, plus there's interest, definitely a formula. Interest, something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah, I can attest to that. Typically when we develop projects on land that is in a 61A tax program, when we lease a certain portion of that property, that portion of the property is taken out of the 61A tax status, and then the rollback on taxes is paid to the town. So as a project, or as the developer of the project, that's what we would be looking to do. So my question is this, is that that seems to circumvent the town's ability to purchase it, um, and I just want to know how that all plays legally from our legal team. Okay. John, go ahead. I'm sorry. Did you have... The only final thing was that the, uh, the Open Space Committee also reviewed this and also came to the same conclusion as the select board that okay. should it become available, the town would want to purchase it. Yeah, so it's an interesting, it's just a really interesting question if it's in a, it is necessarily an attractive piece of property that the town would want to buy. This sort of loses that, that leverage in... in if it comes out of the 61A rights. Um, I have a question on the frontage requirement that is top level <coughs> uh, for on Wood Street. It doesn't have the appropriate frontage on Wood Street, but it's a, it's, uh, um, a private way. So what is the implication? I mean, it, 
for me, I, I do not know the answer, but I would think that's a Zoning Board of Appeals question, but I don't know. Um, it can be. Uh, a, lot, a way in existence is a way. It's a private way. They can have fun to jump private way. But do you so, know what the funding requirement is? The for a solar facility? It's in agricultural zoning. Uh, it's what, uh, is it 100 feet? I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, it's on the plans here. I believe it's 200 feet. It's 200 feet? Yes, it's 200 feet. It's listed on plan, uh, sheet C 3.1. Thank you. So, so somewhere in the, the materials, it was highlighted that, that uh, it doesn't have the appropriate frontage on Wood Street, and that was somehow a problem. It's not a problem? It has the appropriate frontage on Mechanic, Mechanic Street. Street. Right. I will double check that to make sure. That's I may have misread the materials. I thought that that was a, uh, a difficulty to overcome. It was in the memo or it was in? It was in the somewhere. <laughs> it was somewhere. <laughs> uh, asking me exactly. I, I read it's the same thing. Okay. Okay, that's where it was. Okay. Yeah. That's something I can look into. In yeah, we're gonna part. have to. We're gonna have to figure figure that out for sure. But that's part of the beta's review that you have not seen yet. Okay. So, John, is that it for you? Yes. Okay. So, Phil, I'm gonna ask our our uh, engineer to come up and give us his top level. So, um, <coughs> just by way of introduction, uh, Steve Borgardi, works for Beta. He also has done a number of uh, solar facilities himself. Okay. Um, so he's he did the primary uh, review of this, and uh, I'd like to keep an offer the kind of the general comments. Perfect. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you. So I'm going to try to. There's a number of comments on this project. I'll try to stick to the main ones just in just some time. And if there's any questions on specific top specific items, I'd be happy to answer them or add more detail. Uh, the first comment is related to the equipment area proposed at 5 Mechanic Street. That's that storage area that's in that uh, former garage right by Wood Street. Yeah. Um, the regulations require that any portion of the array have sufficient visual buffer. I think it's something like 75 foot minimum, though it might be able to be waived by the board. Um, but that equipment specifically will be pretty re readily visible from anywhere around Wood Street, just based on what I've seen, mm -hmm. what the existing tree cover is. Um, it, they might not need to provide you know, a 50 foot tree buffer, but maybe something there based on the board's opinion. Okay. Uh, the second comment um, is related to Article 31, the Solar Installation Bylaw, uh, subsection H, which stipulates that the applicant try to minimize the amount of vegetative clearing to the ex extent possible. Now, yep. obviously, you need to do clearing for the array, um, but the applicant is proposing clearing in buffer zones and close to resource areas, which you want to minimize the extent possible. There's a question of if all of the clearing that they're doing is necessary. And typically with these projects, we include a shading analysis to show that any area they're clearing is having, a, is having an actual impact on the ray's ability to generate power. Now the next comment is from the stormwater management permit, SW4. The applicant is proposing to regrade the site. Any steep slopes are going to be regraded to a slope of 20% or less. But there's no actual proposed contours on the plans. Um, and it's based on the amount of steep slopes. It's anticipated that there'll be a pretty significant amount of regrading, which can have an impact on erosion control and stormwater runoff and all that stuff. So we'd like to see a more detailed mm -hmm depiction of what they're actually proposing to put in this array. Next comment is SW6. The applicant needs to provide a watershed plan showing pre and post development drainage areas. Um, essentially their analysis treats the project as one single catchment area, but they actually should be runoff going to the east and to the west and to the south and possibly to the north. So we'd like to see a breakdown of those different areas and how the grading and different cover types are going to affect them. The next one is comment SW9. The, the 
hydrologic calculations they've provided are really just the first step in a stormwater management report, especially for a project of this size. Um, there's a number of requirements in the stormwater management bylaw, but in general, we'd like to see time of concentration, peak discharge rates, runoff volumes, different cover types, really how the project's actually going to affect the area rather than just a comparison of different areas. We'd also like to see that apply to the different <coughs> catchment areas rather than the project as a whole. Uh, the next comment is SW34 relating to TSS removal. Um, for a project like this, there's usually not too many sediment loads since there's not really any impervious areas proposed except for the access road. Um, there's some concern that any runoff from the access road might carry sediment, especially into the resource areas in Whitehall Brook mm -hmm. nearby. Um, so we'd like to see some kind of mitigation measure, such as a swale alongside the road, a berm, uh, something like that, to keep any sediment from tracking into those resource areas. Uh, the next few comments is SW35, SW39. It's related to erosion control. Um, the in general, the erosion control plan is proposing mulch tubes in certain areas around the perimeter of the array, but it might not be sufficient, especially for a project of this size, to actually control the amount of sedimentation you'd expect. So we'd like to see possibly a draft stormwater pollution prevention plan, some more erosion controls, maybe a construction sequencing plan, just to make sure that, especially given the past use as a gravel pit, there's not going to be too much erosion into those resource areas. And then finally, it's mentioned in the narrative, we didn't have a copy of the Notice of Intent, which um, I believe has since been submitted to the town, so that wasn't included in our review. Um, so there is, the applicant is proposing impacts to the buffer zones. Um, it seems to be outside of resource areas, but we definitely need to make sure that those, uh, I suppose the CONCOM will touch on it, but those areas are being managed. Besides that, that's um, the limit of if there's any questions on what I've said or anything else I have. No, I appreciate that a lot. Um, and typically what we would see, the sooner you get comments back to beta, they are very good about getting uh, responses back. Um, and so to maximize your efficiency at your next hearing is to facilitate getting the information to them to, in response so you get that back and forth. Um, will you speak to the zoning? Was it in was it in your review? Yes. Well, the the general comment was um, frontage needs to be off. From what I understand of the zoning bylaw, frontage needs to be at least 200 feet um, off of a road with a right of way. Part of the problem is Mechanic Street, at least based on the GIS maps that the town has, doesn't actually have a right of way. It seems to be included in actually one of the lots they're proposing. So um, it really comes down to the town, I suppose, you know, whether that's really a problem if um, the frontage is really an issue in the zoning board. But that's the main gist of the problem. There's no frontage on Wood Street, and Mechanic Street doesn't have a right of way, so it's unclear if it actually counts towards fulfilling that frontage requirement. Okay, I appreciate you bringing that point up. Thank you so much. I'm sure we'll see you again. Um, I would recommend that you speak to the zoning enforcement officer on that issue. At least get the basics of your um, your information and your argument in place. Um, and you know, if he's satisfied, if it's simple and he's satisfied, it's likely we're satisfied as well. But. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, guys. Right, thank you. All right. So we have a, uh, just a few minutes. Um, this would be the time for I'm gonna. Uh, use this time for the public to come forward with any comments um, in particular to add to the detail of what we will discuss to make sure that we um, speak about whatever might be most concerning or most apropos to you. So if there are members of the public who came tonight to speak in particular to help shape the agenda, please feel free to come forward. You might, yeah, you might lose it. Hi, Chief. Good evening. 
Um, just a point of interest to the presentation is um, he mentioned a uh, storage facility, and I don't know that I've faced that in what we've done in our other projects so far that I've reviewed for you. So it, it kind of, I'd just like to get the information a little bit deeper in that. It didn't really, it didn't jump out at me in the plans that I saw yeah. so far. And the uniqueness of that, of this being a commercial property, but we kind of had some leeway just because it's been the, the solar arrays. But if you start putting uh, storage facilities and it really becomes, falls under what 527 CMR covers in facilities and access roads and water supply and fire protection systems. So I'm just kind of curious, you know, let's jump in the gun a little bit until I yeah. see what's there. But yeah. it, it seems that that's a little different than what I've seen in the other projects. Thanks. Thanks. Anybody else from the public? You might as well just let Mr. Larder, how are you? First of all, the uh, just introduce yourself and your address. 230 Wood Street. Yeah. I also own half of Mechanic Street, and I found out about this in my mail when I got home from vacation today. So the left half of the road, I own. Where they're planning this structure may fall within the Woodville Historic District Commission. It's gonna be like right on the line, so it would have to go through them too. So um, I will put that on the... Um Outline, yeah. So there's a line for historic structures. We can just change it to historic. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Um, uh, the other issue certainly plays. Um, it's not an issue that um, we necessarily get to decide. So that is going to be um, that's going to be something that you know the applicant and neighbors need to figure out together. So can I just request that this? The packet be sent to the Woodville Historic District Chair just so yes. they can review it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, anything else you want to add to the uh, agenda? No, I originally came because I was concerned about wetlands. Now I know I'm going to have a building outside of my kitchen window. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. Anybody else? All right, when is our next time to hear this? August 12th. So we'll end, I'll enter, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up um, at this point. Um, and then we'll start with planning board members adding to the agenda when we reconvene. Um, so I will entertain a motion to continue this public hearing to August 22nd. Um, before we do that, should yep. we schedule a site walk? Oh yes, thank you. I had it on my list and went right by it. Thank you. Good catch. Yes. So um, we do like to do a site walk. Um, <coughs> and for the members of the public, all members of the public that are interested in this, the site walk is not, we do post it because very often we have a majority of the planning board members there. Um, it's not part of the hearing process. We don't take testimony. We don't take detailed, ask or answer detailed questions, but certainly getting, um, a, a walkabout and to see exactly what it is we're contemplating and exactly where others, um, other structures are and how it might impact and play um, is very va valuable. So um, we very often do them on Saturday mornings at nine o'clock. Is that what's a what's a Saturday that works for people? Ugh, summer. <sighs> this is when we get out our calendars. Yes. Eight o'clock. Um, I don't mind 8 o'clock either. Um, the 20th. Uh, I am available on the 20th. Yeah. Show of hands. hands. I'm available. I'll, I'll go out myself. Oh, okay. It's fine. Um, do you, um, are you available if we go earlier? Okay. I'm not sure. I have a, okay. I got to check. Uh, earlier is not great. Okay. Are you available on the 20th? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you are? Yeah. Okay. So we'll stick with nine, and then maybe you'll let us know, or you'll yeah. try and drop out there with them. Okay. All right. So uh, can we schedule a site walk for July 20th at 9 o'clock? Um, and where should we plan to park and meet? Um, if you follow the uh, private way down to the project area, uh, right
right in the beginning of the gravel pit. We can all meet up there. So I All right, so we'll, we'll start at 9, and you folks will be standing there with big, broad smiles, so we'll know where we're going, right? Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> All right. And we said 9? Nine. 9, yeah. How long do you think we need for the walk? It's a big area. What do you think? Special permit is going to be no, no, yeah, more definitely, than no an hour? definitely no more than an hour. Okay, so we'll plan on, a, we'll plan on having an hour available. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, thank and you. then we should entertain the motion to continue. Sure. Before we do that, the uh, stormwater management permit needs a decision by August 5th, so we would need to request a continuation. For that. So, yes, the decision on the stormwater management per, uh, permit, we would need uh, the applicant's agreement that we can have an extended deadline on that to at least the 19th, August 19th. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right. So, I just want to know that I looked yeah. at the Woodville Historic District map, and the whole Wood Street in that area on both sides is in the Historic District. So if, it, if things can be seen from the street, it seems like it, they would be will, under there. It will be. It will be. Thing. We'll definitely take a look at that overlay. Okay. Thank you, Amy. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, just that a real quick question. You can. So you had mentioned. Um, so just an FYI, we tried not to have utility, new utility poles. We try to keep it like net zero. But you mentioned that um, you might be able to go under a water uh, pipe. Yeah, there's a water easement that runs basically along the southern or southeastern border there and kind of west. So in that area, we're going to try so you need work. to do some more research. Is it like a yeah, 50% work. chance that you may be able to go under it or just roughly? Not sure what okay. the percentage. So I got to talk with the, the easement owner and see if that they might balk at that, yeah. uh, you know, make us go over. I just want to let you know that the, the overground, you know, utilities is. I think we've got a if we can get away with them, Definitely. what's that? We've got that on the agenda. Yeah, but cool. they're they're fairly warned that it's a big deal. Right. <laughs> Just a verbal heads up. I would I would actually like to ask for the planning board's support to uh, get the chairman, uh, if he is interested and willing, the the chair of the board, the select board. Oh, I'm having a hard time with all these new terms. The select board chair and myself and John and Norman to speak with the town attorney and understand the 61A implications that. more completely. Okay. All right, so if we can try and set something up, John, um, on a Tuesday afternoon when you guys are already here, it was, uh, you know, late, later in the day, I know Brendan is typically available after four best, and I am best available after 4.30, just if we could aim for the evening. Sorry, one more. Council. Say it again. I'll check with town council. That'd be great. <coughs> or a quick question about 61A. Perhaps you know the answer. So is it any property over 10 acres? No. It's no. Chapter 61A, chapter 61A <coughs> is a specific protection that... Oh, that better tax rate, right? Yes. So people apply yes, for so it. So it's very often a large tract of property that is wooded. For some reason, it's an attractive piece of property. Or it's... Um, um, it's a, a farm or an orchard, and, and it, w it is to enable, empower um, the, the landowner to keep it in its natural state, utilizing it as a farmer, just keep a tree. Just this with any of the other solar farms, big acreage. Big yeah, yeah, just in that maybe. We should keep moving. Thanks, Dad. Yeah, yeah. To yeah. Do. no, you're right. Um, okay, so we're going to get more information on Thank that you. for sure. Um, thank you very much. So uh, the motion is for the 22nd with the decision to be the 29th on the, what's the decision? 19th. The, the stormwater water. management permit decision. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Hang on. Yep. The, the meeting's the August 12th. 12th, not the 22nd. The decision. said the 22nd. Oh, thank you. August 12th. I knew it didn't And the decision is right. the 19th. And the decision is the 19th. Cool. At 7.30. Seven yes. Say it again. Is that keeping the promise of one meeting? That's the, is that one meeting in August? Anyway. All, all those in, is there a second? All, second? Second. Second. All those in favor? For the 12th. Aye. For the 12th? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, I'll check. All right. So we have, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Right. Just, to just so I am clear, we're continuing to the 12th, not the 23rd. 12th, oh, the 22nd. yes. I'm sorry uh, the 22nd. for the confusion. Okay. That's all me. It's 12th the 12th of August. Good catch. Yep. August. And right. the decision is for the 19th. Yes. Okay. Thank you. August 12th.
Thank you. Yeah, Thank I you. I might need a nap or something. I don't know. <laughs> Ooh, wow. Okay. So next on our agenda is um, is the administrative piece, and I say we go straight to the growth study committee interviews. Um, can I ask, because I don't know everybody that applied, are people here for the interviews? I know one person is. Are people here for the growth study committee interviews? Well, Fran, come on down. Who's this guy? <laughs> it's good to see your face. Good to see, you. good to see everybody, board members. Uh, thank you for applying. Yes. So, um, process perspective, are we, we have um, two members of the planning board who have put uh, statements of interest forward. Um, we know that our two um, appointees from um, the chamber are Finn Perry and Chuck Joseph. Um, and we have three at large um, statements of interest. And Fran is one of them. So thank you for coming. And uh, tell us just a tiny bit about yourself and why you'd like to be on the committee. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my name is Francis DeYoung, 3 Doyle Lane. Um, I am interested in serving on this committee to be able to help support the planning board in the broader efforts, um, putting together a plan of action, looking and assessing past growth, and identifying opportunities for future growth. I think my background is serving on the planning board as well as the uh, on ZAC gives me, I think, a unique perspective uh, to be able to work with other boards and to be able to contribute back to the community and back to this board as well. So uh, just as in full disclosure, I heavily recruited France to want me, yes. <laughs> but I don't know how other people feel. <laughs> I would have done it anyway, man. That's, uh, it's a pleasure to be able to serve. No gifts were exchanged. I didn't know money. <laughs> None at all. But. Does anybody have any questions or comments? I mean, Fran would do a great job. Yep. So, so sorry, just from a process perspective. Yep. So we have two people we don't see. Two people that we don't see. We have three at large positions. Yes, we do. And we have three applicants for the at large positions. That's correct. Okay. Yep. Um, I am um, I am really interested in having Fran. So I'm uh, you know I entertain a motion to appoint Fran to the committee. So moved. Is, Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, really, it's really could be, I think it's going to be great work, to be honest with you. And, I'm excited. Uh, I think there's a lot of good work to be done and a lot of good work to be Finn able to share. Finn and Chuck are amazing resources, and I think that they're going to bring a lot. So I think it's going to be fun. Yeah. Um, do you have a preference on meeting night since you're here? And um, I'm very flexible. If I'm in town, I'm here. If okay. I'm on the road, I can dial in. Okay, because that's one of the things we're going to kind of think Doing about. Pretty good. Thank you very much. Good luck, everybody. I really appreciate that you jumped you. on. Um, so, process point. Did we? Do we know if we that we communicated clearly that there were going to be interviews tonight? We put in the advertisement that interviews were going to be at this meeting, and we strongly recommended that they people would come. Attend. Yeah. Okay. But but didn't we get the few um, other members at large? Didn't we get them kind of late? Just today. Yeah. We just uh, got yeah. So we got one Friday night and one yesterday. Yes. Yeah, so maybe give them another opportunity and another meeting. Can we do that? So, uh, was there any acknowledgement or any? Like, I, you know, in their submission, I mean, I, I think you forwarded the emails themselves, but, yep. uh, you know, I, I guess I'm just a little concerned that um, they didn't, there wasn't even an effort to say, oh, I'm sorry, I can't make the meeting on Monday. Um, I mean, I, I, I agree with Deb. I, I, I'd be more comfortable deferring until they actually can come to a planning board meeting myself. I, I wouldn't. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy to invite them to come to uh, the next meeting. To interview it, absolutely. It does just delay when we can start our work. It it does. Although we could um, we could potentially invite the members that we know are part of it just to um, begin meeting, and and that would be a piece of information that applicants could react to whether they were going to be able to support that meeting day and time. I don't know. And I guess it's no different than having you know Openings. open open Openings position open. Yeah. 
It's just we need to have at least a quorum appointed so that they can have a meeting. Which we do already, right? Well, if we appoint you and I, if we, if we are appointed successfully. <laughs> I think that's the right course of action, just. Because uh, then we have two. I'm sorry, Andrew. No, no, that's uh, just proceeding, but not appointing until there's some conversation. Like, uh, that just seems to me, that just makes sense. Okay, that sounds good. Um, do we need to uh, vote Amy and I? Yes. I'll entertain a motion. So Second. moved. <laughs> Second. Second. Okay. Any so do discussion? we need to vote together or can we, do we need to vote separately? Uh, I think you can vote. vote together, to be honest with you. And a okay. reminder that there's two alternate seats, too, right? Didn't we establish it so that there'd be two alternate seats um, specifically for interested planning board members if they wanted to jump on? Or did we define it? Sure we it. I don't know if we, we didn't didn't define defined it. As we did not define it. It's just alternate seats. They could be so, okay. So they could be planning board members, or they could be members at large. Um, okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Oh, vote no on this. You can vote. Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Thank you. Um, yes. So just to clarify, in fairness' sake, since the two applicants. We're past the deadline. Should no, we didn't we have it? What was the deadline? Friday at 5. Friday at 5. Ah, I had it in my head that it was today at 5. Okay. Should we continue to accept applicants if they were to come in? Yes. Yes. I, think so. I don't yes. think that there's another way to do that. Thank you for pointing that out. I didn't, I didn't really realize that. I missed that detail. Um, so yes, so uh, when would we continue to accept, we should post that, that we're continuing yeah. to accept, accept we'll applicants. Make a motion to continue it to the next meeting, right, the deadline? So the issue is, I guess, if we post a position, it probably has to be in the newspaper or in the advertisement for 10 days like the previous one. Right. So, I think you're right. Um, so that would be the first meeting in August would be the soonest we could do it? The 12th. Well, I think that that's, I mean, okay. from a process perspective, it's the only way to do it. So we're going to post sorry, that. It's 14 days away that our next meeting is, right? So Just why it wouldn't we go? Might not. So it would it's be, also 10 business days. Okay. It would, and it would be <laughs> getting the applications by that day, which would not give us a lot of processing, getting the actual notice out. But I, I'm, I'm fa in favor of getting the notice out and having it, you know, a fixed 10 days out and having whatever date that is, that you po you post it 10 business days out and have that be the deadline, and then we have the applications in before the 12th. Does that sound? Or the Friday before the meeting, right? It wouldn't have to be exactly 10 days. Well, how about the Tuesday before the meeting? It seems we have okay. plenty of time, and we usually do Tuesdays. I'm, I'm fine with that. Tuesday before the, so the typical deadline for, um, for our meetings. Um, Okay, awesome. Um, so, so on that topic, yes. Do does that do we want to establish an initial meeting for the so newly accepted members of the growth committee, or do I, we want to wait until we have a? Um, I would like to aim at something if we can, but we have to reach out. Fran's still here, nice, yeah. and he is <laughs> he's available. He's flexibly available. Um, the Chamber of Commerce. Right. Chamber of Chamber Commerce right. reps, right. So if it's possible to meet on alternate Monday nights from the planning board. We have Zach on Zach. Monday nights. Mm -hmm. but I'm not on Zach. But we, we're not on Zach. Okay. I staff Zach. You staff Zach. Um, so yes, but um, are you hankering for an extra meeting to go to? <laughs> Not necessarily. Not necessarily. So I, I think we could start without necessarily professional staff because we don't have the kind of detailed minutes when we're starting. Um, and I wasn't necessarily, and I think I wasn't necessarily thinking we were just going to add to your plate as far as attending meetings. Does that sound? I don't feel like I have time to take notes. This is in a minute. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, so we can meet and then we can sort of uh, figure out if it's going to be possible. Is that, okay. does Mondays, I'm only picking Monday because it's a night we set aside anyway. Yeah, Monday, I'm available Monday. Okay. So do you mind reaching out to our two um, 
compatriots on the Chamber of Commerce and seeing if we can begin, because it would have to be posted. To the 15th or the 29th? Um, so you'd have to reach them tomorrow to be able to post it for the 15th. Um, when's our next meeting? 22nd, right? Well, if we can do it for the 15th, post it for the 15th, if you can reach them, if they're available. And if we can't, then we go to the 29th. Of course, it all falls apart if they're not available on Monday nights. So, so Fran, you can make the t either the 15th or the 29th? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thank so you. So whichever is better for the other two, then, I yeah. guess it's fine. Yeah. Perfect. And then just <laughs> let us know so we don't skip it. And we need to ask. We'll both respond tomorrow. And should I just make the agenda? Would, would you like, I guess, would you like to meet here? Where would you like to meet? Anywhere is there no. any place that has air conditioning? I'm just asking. Are, are, we, are we allowed to be here? Go for the um, library. Actually, the uh, conference table up in the third oh, that's floor a good, probably has air conditioning. Yeah, if that's, if that spot is available and there is air conditioning, let's try for that. That would be great. Thank you. Yeah, that should be Because I'm about to die. And can we specifically tell Shai Duel and Praveena that we're going to meet, or that they should come to the next meeting, the 12th, the two applicants, if they could come to the next to, to both the 20s to the to the meeting to the 12th on August 12th yeah. yes the yes well, for appointments. Should probably also consider coming well you can tell them when we're meeting too they can come and watch they just wouldn't be be able to vote yeah. I'd be strongly encouraged and the other thing is anybody who's been appointed has to be sworn in oh for, yeah <laughs> for the meeting. that just is jumped into my head is there any kind of draft agenda you guys can think of or is it just going to be introductory discussion? um we can talk about this offline too. Yeah, but you do need a draft agenda. Yeah, we'll tomorrow. We'll be we'll be quick about that. Okay, awesome. Maybe, maybe let's do it now. Timeline, um, top level um, organization of the committee, um, meeting dates and times, going forward. And who's going to take the minutes? <laughs> and a discussion about the, the mission statement and, uh, and what our task is and roles. Is that need to appoint Ben Perry and Chuck Joseph, or are they just No, they're, they are appointed by the chamber. Does that sound, does that, does that work? At least we have, because we, we do have to post an agenda in order to be posting the meeting. So. And that will give us plenty to talk about. Okay, perfect, thank you. Okay, what is next? Should we do the a and uh, Yeah. Uh, I know we have to do those tonight, right? Yeah, talk, walk us through what we have to get done. Uh, so we have to get done the 19 John Matthew Road a &R, the Leonard Street a &R, the 300 Wood Street a and r and the, and the nine Morse. I think we have to get the nine more street as well. well okay, let's not skip those. Um, can we just make the, a quick announcement um, about um, the Mass DOT public forum? Dave, you were like right on the game there. Yeah, that was Getting funny. Getting the conversation huh? in front of us. Yeah. Um, so for the public, I actually had a neighbor ask me about it. And so for the public, there are um, public forums this week on the proposed I-90, I-495 interchange work. Um, one, go ahead. Sorry, I talked to the person who's organizing it and that's an invite only forum. The general public forum is gonna take place on July 25th at Town Hall. The, okay, thank you. So there were, okay. the, what is that, yeah. invite yeah. only? DOT. Right, and so those were, he, he clarified, he said those were for invitation stakeholders only. Okay, even the one at 6.30 here at the Town Hall basement on Thursday? On Thursday? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Because he, he, I did email him and he responded and... We were it, invited. It may just be, a, if you know about it, he'll stay okay because you only know about it because of an invite, because of the letter Amy got. Um, but I, clar I emailed him today and I asked him if there was any other information publicly available and he said it was only for invite only and the July 25th. So when is the public invited to attend? Uh, July yep. 25th. I can At what it. time? I will find it. Yep. So this is a conversation about the approaches that they are uh, contemplating to um, address 
the safety slowdown, problematic interchanges, I-90 and I-495, and particularly people who live out on the end of um, Fruit Street in the Roosevelt Farms or the Huckleberry, I think, might have um, more interest in knowing what, what plans are, are being considered. So, it's, so it actually might be the one that you, I think you were referencing, that's in the basement? But it's on July 25th at 6.30. 6.30 p.m. in the Hopkinton Town Hall basement? Correct. Maybe, 6.30 to 8.30. Maybe the e email that Amy sent just had the wrong date on it. No, I, no. I, I've been getting letters from them all along as a stakeholder. Like, EHOP is considered a stakeholder somehow. So I, I'm not sure how that happened, but I've been getting letters over the years. <laughs> I wonder if they just changed the date and there's really nothing. You've got to you gotta get connected like Amy's connected. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> So, so I think someone from EHAP will go to so, one of those. Then. So, so, so I could get on the invite for Wednesday. So I, <laughs> I responded like I was being welcomed. I responded that I was going to attend the Thursday at six thirty, and I'm going. They said, "Great, we'd love to have you." So, so I'm going to be attending that. I'll, one. I'll forward you the email because I just said I'm a Hopkinton resident member of the planning board, and like to attend. And the title of the email was 495 Mass Pike Project Public Input Session. He responded, thanks for your RSVP. The meeting will address the results of the advances in the design efforts as well as public input since the second round of public outreach last fall. For Thursday or? That's for this Thursday. The one on Wednesday is at 1. And the one on, one. One. And the one on Thursday is at 6.30. And do you know where that is? It says it's in the town hall basement. Not the one on Wednesday. The, yeah. Oh, and the one on Wednesday is 5 McAdam Road. So do you know where McAdam is? I'm not going to Wednesday. Yeah, so I don't. Don't that one, so we'll do one so right. Tuesdays is the 23rd, is what you're or 25th. That was the public session. The 25th. July 25th at 6.30 p.m. is the one in Hopkinton Town Hall basement is the one that is open to the general public for anybody who's listening at home. And I have heard concerns from Rocky Woods neighborhood. Too. So I think those people, oh, yeah, those no, I would, neighbors will be going. I um, would imagine yeah. people would be interested. So, so that, that's the most convenient one to everybody here, but there's also one July 30th in Hudson. Okay. People you know what? We should just, at our next meeting, if we could have all the sessions um, in the packet so that people can get to them. Okay. That would be great. Okay. <coughs> all righty. Thank you. So um, walk us through 19 John Matthew Road. So, um, this is a, an okay, a Please don't. Hey, Joe. You think? So, this, uh, as a condition of the Board of Appeals decision regarding the building lot at 19 John Matthew Road, they required that the building lot have the minimum lot size of 60,000 square feet for the underlying zoning district. A piece of other land on parcel A will be transferred from the 0 Elizabeth Road parcel to the 19 John Matthew Road building lot. Both 0 Elizabeth Road and parcel A are labeled as non buildable lots. Okay. I need it. Excuse me. Appears entitled to endorsement. Okay. Do you want to say anything about it? Yeah, I think John summarized it pretty well. Okay. <laughs> Any questions or concerns? From the board. All right, I'll entertain a motion to approve the uh, ANR at 19 John Matthew Road. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in fa favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Great. There you go. Thank you very much. Oh. All right, um, I'm going to scamper down to 300 Wood Street. That's not helpful. Yeah. Um, the proposed subdivision is to create two conforming lots, both with frontage on Wood Street. The two lots will have required a lot area and frontage required by the residents in district in which it is located. The plan appears to be entitled to endorsement. So let's say that again, two buildable lots then? Okay. If I can rotate this somehow. All right. Um, uh, any questions? 
Is the applicant here? Yeah. He just came in. Does, oh. It looks like there's an existing building that's going to be close to the lot line. Correct. It says, I think it says so garage to be raised. So if A and R is the only the only uh, criteria that it needs to meet is frontage and lot size. Okay. So um, the endorsement of the planning board does not constitute consistency with zoning. Okay. All right. I'll entertain a motion to approve the ANR for 300 Wood Street. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. And then uh, the ANR for nine Morse Lane. So the proposed subdivision is to create a new conforming lot as well as a non-buildable lot on Moore Street. The non-buildable lot will eventually be combined with the adjacent lot, resulting in no net increase of lots. The plan appears entitled to endorsement. So say that again. So we're going to, that, that non-conforming lot is going to be combined right. with the triangle? So, uh, correct. Um, and so then that will be a buildable lot, right? Yeah. Right, so if I, if I... Um, have this correctly. The the triangle lot is a separate lot. Yeah. And then the oddly shaped lot is a separate lot. lot is a separate lot. I got you. They're going to cut the bottom portion off with the building and leave the back very oddly shaped lot as a, a non-buildable lot. And then eventually the triangle lot and the other lot will create will be combined into one lot, making that kind of up. I guess you but no net increase in lots. Right, because yeah. you're taking from one and yep. putting it. Yep. Okay. Welcome. Okay. Thank you. Introduce yourself and uh, So I'm Ray Capabianco. Um, Joseph Capabianco is my son. Welcome. And you live where? Um so I live at currently at nine Morse Lane. Yeah. He owns seven Morse Lane. Okay. So you're making two lots for Yep. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Lucky because you. Um, anybody have any questions or concerns? Uh, I will entertain a motion to approve the ANR for nine more slain. So moved. Second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? See that? Thank you. All set. Thank you. Thanks for your patience. Thank you. All right. Um, I'm just going to do uh, the minutes for June 10th. I'll entertain a motion on the minutes for June 10th. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor of the minutes as written? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, perfect. Thanks again, Kobe. Awesome job. All righty. So the, one, the last thing we have to do tonight is um, Leonard Street a &R. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. So let's do that next. And Sorry, are we going to go back to Buckland? Yes, same. Which one are we doing right now? The A and R for Leonard Street. <coughs> so the Leonard Street A and R um, does not propose to alter or change any lot lines, boundaries, or other aspects of the property. It does show Buckland Street as a way, uh, which the planning board has determined not to be the case. We've got a memo from town or an email from town council, and I will read portion that they uh, suggested. So the question was, does the plan submitted by Wall Street dated June 12th qualify for endor endorsement as approval not required under MGL Chapter 4181, Section 81P? The answer from Town Council is no. In August 2018, Wall Street submitted a similar plan. I informed Wall Street's counsel, Chris Timpson, that my firm would advise the planning board not to endorse the plan because it appears to show Buckland Street as a way currently in existence, and thus endorsement by the planning board would appear to make Lot 1 currently buildable lot, which it is not because Buckland Street does not, in fact, currently exist on the ground. I pointed out to Attorney Timpson that if Wall Street wished to record a plan confirming existing parcel boundaries, it could rely on the provisions of MGL Chapter 41, Section 81X, allowing recording of a plan bearing a certificate by a registered land surveyor attesting to the necessary facts. And I got an email from uh, Rebecca Lacey, Town Council, uh, shortly after this, that said after that was made, they withdrew the ANR. Just for oh. full history. Who, who withdrew? Uh, Attorney Timson. So the, 
The last, oh, the last, last application? Last one. Not oh, this the last one. one. Yes, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the last one. one. Yeah. After that determination was made on the previous okay. K&R. Right, right. Okay. So, um, you want to talk about that? Yeah. Okay, just quickly on the A on the A and R. I mean, this um, it's not meant for a um, uh, intention of declaring a way in existence. Leonard Street is a way in existence and has been a way in existence, and Buckland Street is a way that predates the subdivision control law. So, um, I think either way. Back when we uh, first started this process, we had submitted an A and R plan. And uh, we had conversations with town council that, um, and it showed lots at that time, the division of the lots. So at, at that time, we, uh, we wanted to cooperate with the town and not put them under any deadlines to sign it or make a decision at that time. So we withdrew it, that plan at that time. So now uh, we're just basically showing the lot as, as it presently exists, one lot with frontage on Leonard Street and frontage on Buckland Street. And regardless of what happens during this process with the various applications we have planned, uh, we're still entitled under chapter 185, section five to build the roadway for access and at some point in the future if we resolve all of our other civil uh, disagreements with the two neighbors. So, or we can, access from Leonard Street. So um, either way, I think it's the plan is the plan. Okay. Um, but I, I don't want to, um, if we have limited time, I'd rather focus on the Buckland Street. Well, we have to decide it tonight and, and notify you because the decision is due, right? Tomorrow. tomorrow. So say that again. The decision is due tomorrow. Right, well, I can extend that. Okay. I'd rather focus on where we were for okay. the Buckland Street. It's just, just one thought, I don't, and I don't know if this is worth opening it up, but um, the, the guidance that we got from town council is pretty clear, and yeah. I'm inclined to follow that. So mm -hmm. personally, I'm probably ready to vote. I don't know where other people mm -hmm. are on it, but... Um, I am as well. Yep, uh, I agree. Okay, well, we'll just appeal it and we'll go. If you want. I, mean, I think uh, I don't think really town council understands what we submitted because we've had several meetings with them prior to the, during the past 12 months we've, and I'm not quite sure that they understand that this is a pre-existing lot with frontage okay um, it seemed pretty clear that they were pretty on their game but that is a question for um, them um, I'll entertain a motion uh, so Yes. Sorry, just based on Mr. Petrosi's comments, I mean, the other option is, you know, at his request, it. we could extend it, and you can reach out to yeah, I town, think council. town council and I, I prefer that, that would be a more... Well, that makes better sense to me, too. Right. If, if you think there's a disconnect, then... Yeah, I think, I think fine. there is a disconnect. Because All right, so let's, um, let's say, when is the next time we would be able to see... <coughs> August 12th. August 12th again, okay. So let's extend that the decision on the uh, ANR, if you're amenable, to um, August 19th. Sure, fine. Thank you. Okay. If you can, for are you able to forward me that email so that I can send? Uh, it there should it? be a copy over there. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I can. I can also forward it to you. Yeah, yeah. No, I just that way the two attorneys. I just want to confirm that you can actually extend. The deadline for an A and R. Okay. Uh, do you want to take? While John is looking at that, you want sure. to take us back. So we left off at uh, on the fourth requested waiver. Of, uh, do you have to open up the hearing again? Or no? Nope. We continued it. Okay. So uh, section eight point two point two point A. Uh, granite curbing. So we, um, you know, this roadway was designed as a rural uh, roadway with, with uh, low impact uh, drainage uh, features. We're not uh, proposing any uh, curbing on the roadway. And uh, so, uh, especially on the radiuses or um, 
So we requested a waiver for that curbing and um, the following waiver plays into that with uh, 8.2.2.C modified Cape Cod berm, no Cape Cod berm, and no granite curbing. So it's basically a rural street design. Uh, the roadway is tilted so that all the water runs into a uh, drainage swales that's on the plan, so there are, so it's strictly no curbing on the roadway. Any comments from the board? Dave? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, um, I'm a big fan of the berm, but I'm just trying to think through how it fits in with the stormwater drainage. If we nope. don't want anything draining to the north side, that's the way it's it's oriented, you know, is to drain to the south side. So couldn't there be a curb on the the way it's the, the way the roadway is designed is you know we have a series of drainage swells along the side of the road. There's no pipe in the ground like you a conventional pipe system. So in order to keep water from entering onto the north side of the property, the roadway is tilted and the water as sheet flows across into the drainage swales and there's a infiltration trench I think along the side of the road so curbing um, would interfere with that the uh, way the drainage is currently designed. Am I explaining that correctly? And so um, if, if, we, if curbing were, if it, let's say a Cape Cod berm were to be required by the, the board, the drainage system wouldn't work as it's designed because it would interfere with the flow going across the street, going across. Um, and there really isn't any need to put a berm on the north side um, because that water is going south across the roadway. To do a Cape Cod berm, you'd have to widen the road another foot in order for the berm to be installed. Or we proposed a 20-foot uh, paved way, so or the way would have to be 19 feet so that you have a foot to install the berm on the north side of the roadway. So um, that's the reason why uh, we're not proposing any curbing uh, to make the drainage work better. So yeah. Two questions. One, can you just confirm how is this parcel currently zoned? Um, a, uh, what was it? A, 15,000 square foot, 100 foot frontage. Is it an A? Residential A. Residential A. So, so I guess just one point on that, like, I don't know if residential A necessarily means rural. No, no. I'm, I, what, what's defined in your regulations is based on how many houses. Uh, so the minimum width of a traveled way and then um, uh, rural, it's defined here, rural is 20 feet and then in your things it's 10 or less cars is how they okay. define the, the pavement. You know, I just, I'm just using this. Yeah. It's, it's okay. defined as a rural road because it only has four proposed homes on it and that's kind of what the definition uh, So I think yeah. that's through the you chair. You know where it is? Through the chair. This all ties in together because yep. the 8.2.3.A that he's, he wants a waiver on um, the right of way yep. is supposed to be 40 feet minimum. Yep. So I mean, if he's making a 20 foot road, he should have 10 feet on each side right away. Yep. Except, except that we don't have a right of way that's that. Why we only we have a variable width right of way that's maybe thirty feet in some areas and twenty eight feet in other areas. But he owns the property. What what what, is, what constrains your width? The right of way. What what can yeah what constrains the the right of way? The stone walls. Stone there's stone walls on both sides. Yes, yes. I don't remember stone walls on both sides. Well, that's how that's how we arrived at these. Um, this is not a scenic road. The stone walls should not. 
Well, I, so it's not a it's not it's not road. <laughs> right. No, we, we're not saying it is a standing road, but we're right. just using the definitions that are in here that fit into the category. So, so my take on it, through the chair, yes, is I I, 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 I would be willing to compromise on the curbing on the south side because that's stormwater, but on the north side, I think there should be a curb, there should be a sidewalk, there should be a, a right of way, that's standard for all the other roads. Um, okay, and Mayor, I agree with David. I, I feel like a curb on the northern side would would definitely do the protection of you know the wetlands we're you know, trying to make sure that it's all draining to the south isn't that extra assurance that it would I don't know. well there's no wetlands on the northerly side of the property but you want it not to drain there correct right okay right. so well, we that, designed that it so that everything drains there now if we, right if we go ahead and, and do that it just simply isn't any, if you're proposing that we put a berm and a sidewalk on the northerly side of the roadway, there just simply isn't any room. But to the chair, shift the road over, it's all your property, right? Yeah. It, there's a, it's easier said than done. I mean, it's not easily done that way. So. All right, so we so, have two, just, just so you know, we have two votes that are currently for uh, the, uh, the roadway, sidewalks, and the curbing. So. So I just got to push back a little bit because I, I realized that Cape Cod berms would impact your storm drainage, but not really. It wouldn't. It, it, the Cape Cod berm would impact if it was installed on the southerly side. Would impact it because it wouldn't allow water to sheet flow. I yes, that's that's what I'm saying. But 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 I guess my only point is is that 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 bylaw existed before you did your stormwater plant. So to me, if I was designing a stormwater plan, I, I would have tried to accommodate as many of the bylaws as I as I. Well, I can. think we comply with your regulations, your stormwater bylaw management bylaw and mass DEP stormwater. But, but, but you're telling me that Cape Cod berms would impact your if, stormwater if, plan. If it would, under those scenarios, we would then have to uh, design a, some sort of a. You know, gaps in the in the berm to allow the water to enter into those basins. I mean, through the chair, and plus the roadway the would have to be yeah, yeah, the roadway would have to be a foot wider on each side to accommodate a Cape Cod berm on each side. So, I mean, I, we can do the curbing if that's what you want. We just can't do the sidewalk. The sidewalk is uh, is it's five five more feet plus two feet for. Uh, so if you add the pavement width of 20, you add the berm on each side, that's two more feet, that's 22 feet. Now you're going to add five feet for a sidewalk, that's 27 feet. And so this road isn't wide enough, especially in the first 200 feet, it's not. You're going to be making the road, you know, though. So not a problem, you're going to be you're going to be constructing the road as a matter of practicality, so you yeah. can make it work. Amy? No, I agree that I think we need to have the the berm and the curbing on the north side at least. So and the sidewalk? And the sidewalk. So that it's, it's you're seeing the shape of the road um, coming. I, I understand you can deny the waiver and we'll put the sidewalk in, but that doesn't, you know, it's a, I don't know how it's gonna get built that way, that's all. I'm trying to be completely okay. honest. Okay, all right. So just to clarify, clarify, it's either granite or it's Cape Cod. I mean, we're granting well, one on of them. The of the Would you say radius? Well, I mean we're gonna, we're granting one of them, though, right? Right, right. I mean, yeah, we're not having both. Yeah. Okay. I don't, All right. Yeah. Um, so in the interest of time, we're going to be meeting again on August 12th. Um, uh, just to be sure, when we come back, we are going to decide the waivers on the curbing for sure. The curbing, the um, width of the road, the sidewalk, um, and we should address at minimum the dead end streets th turn around and how we feel about that. And we should know before then in hard documentation that you actually have the right to um, connect. to connect. To Maple Street. Yes, oh, Maple yeah, Street sure. Extension. Yeah, no, okay. I spoke with them tonight. All right, so I'm going to um, entertain a motion to, yes. Do you want to clarify the a and R process in this or do you want to do oh i do want to clarify the so i process. couldn't find anything in mgl stating that 
you are allowed to continue. And not being an attorney, I don't feel comfortable right. making a decision saying that that's okay without talking to town council. So my recommendation would be either make a determination on the A&R or request that he withdraw yep. the A&R and submit it at a later time when everything is figured out. Yep. Hmm. All right, well, I'll cooperate. We'll withdraw for the time being. Okay. Uh, okay. No, we're not in any big rush here, so we want to make sure we do it right. And Perfect. I appreciate and that. I just wanted to clarify that we were talking about not the first 222 feet when we're, we're Yes, there, thank so. you. No, not and not the last right. couple hundred feet right. where right. right. Thank you. Just yep. Yep. Can, can I just ask one question on the sidewalk? I mean, I, I think um, is there a, is there an I um, I mean there's four houses on the street, there's no it doesn't the sidewalk doesn't go anywhere. Is there a reason why? You want a sidewalk for 500 feet because I certainly can't build it where the two neighbors are for the first 200 feet. So, just so we will. Uh, you, you can, can absolutely. You, you can, can absolutely ask that question. We can start with that one if yeah. you want. We're just in the interest of time. We have to wrap absolutely. it up, and we have somebody waiting. But you may start with that question if that's where we, where you want to start. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So I will entertain a motion. So we the NR has been withdrawn. I. Uh, I don't know if you have to vote to allow it to be withdrawn. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I will process. entertain a motion to ex uh, to allow the applicant to withdraw the A and R plan without prejudice. So moved. How about we waive the fee for the next submittal? <laughs> I am happy to waive the fee for sure. the next submittal. Yes. Look at us go. It's just a few hundred dollars, but it's yeah. very it's little something. bit counts. It's something. Um, it is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? I will entertain a motion to continue the public hearing um, on the Paper Street um, application and the stormwater permit um, to the 22nd, the 12th of August, and the decision on the 19th. Sorry? So moved. Is that amenable to yes, you, the decision yes, being extended to the 19th? All right, is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, thank you. Great, thanks very much. Yep. Yes. If yep. you guys work later, I'd stay later. <laughs> no, 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 be gone. <laughs> Sorry about thank that, you. thanks for no, your patience. Thank you so much. That was close. It's it is hot in here. Uh, my name is Ken Marsters. This is my son, Ken Jr., with the developers of Highland Park. And we're in our final phase. We've been doing this since 1986. We actually introduced the open space bylaw to the town in 1986. Nice. So that's how old I am, okay? Wow. Um, we worked with John in, in January of um, 2018. We um, got our bond, our Stony Brook Road. Uh, we bonded the road. At the time, I only requested that 10 lots be released. Uh, and the reason why I did that was because I thought if I only released 10 lots, I would only have to pay taxes on the 10 I released. Sometimes that happens, and, you, and then you wouldn't have to pay taxes in the remaining 12. That would save me about $70,000. Well, Hopkinton's really smart. They don't buy that. <laughs> so I'm paying taxes on everything anyways. Oh, I'm glad you hear that. Yeah, you know, yeah. I've, got, I've, got, I've paid a lot of taxes in the last 30-some odd years up here, let me tell you. Um, and that's okay. It's been a pleasure. Um, so what, we're here just to release the remaining 12 lots um, on the bond that we had paid. Now, we did get a letter from Luckner, who's our engineer, um, suggesting that we increase the road bond 5% annually, which I think is a little outrageous because the road bond, what you do a year and a half ago, we took the bond, we worked with Luckner, he came up with a number, we added 20% to that number and we paid that fee. Um, so I think to add, and he wanted, his math says 5% per year, it's been a year and a half, and he came up with 10%. Well, that's not my math anyways. So, you know, if you want to increase the bond, can we negotiate a number, or do we even have to increase the bond at all? That's my, okay. that's my request. Um, he explained it pretty well. <laughs> Thank I, you. I don't really have much to add. Um, that was the number Luckner came up with. He had a formula. He didn't really come up with or give us a good reason as to why that was the formula. I assume it's an industry standard type thing. Um, but it is up to the planning board to determine the bond. Uh, if they How much is the room. bond? So currently they have paid $400,299. Um, Luckner has recommended the 5% increase. And I believe that was just for the five lots as well. 
because he did it on a per lot basis. So now you, oh. as, as much as I understand, <laughs> no. if I understand it, you're now requesting the other five yeah. lots, so now it's going to be 10 total lots. So I think another, that, we'll be requesting another seven lots. Another, so it would be to 12 total? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 12 total. So uh, all I'm saying is, <coughs> with Luckner's calculations, that bond addition would be higher. So if the board wants to follow that, we would have to recalculate that, and they would have to pay that higher bond if we were to go with that recommendation. But keep in mind, whether we release five or 12, and we're releasing the 12 now, so I don't have to go through this exercise again, it's the road. The amount of, the amount of lots doesn't matter what the cost is for bond release. It's to do the whole road, and we have a whole formula here that's $400,000. Uh, yeah, I have a tendency to common sense that they go along with that. It's a certain amount of money for the road to be repaired right. at the end of time. I don't have a real burning desire to add to the burden. What's the total bond we have now? $400,299. And what's the length of the road? About a mile. Well, to the check wrap and run, but yeah. the road is pretty much built. Right? It's, it's, it's built. It's yeah. built. Yeah. It's built. It's it's to repair it after construction. Yeah, right, right. It's to do it's to do some uh, catch basins, additional catch basins, some uh, fencing we have to do with the Rod and Gun Club and pavement. So no, it's, it's not much. To your point though, is it and to you, it is designed for the length of the road, not necessarily how right. many houses are built on it. I'm guessing maybe his formula is taking into account the damage to the road that may yeah. come up per yeah. lot. I, I yeah. really don't know. Yeah. But you're on the hook for the whole road anyway. Yeah, yeah, we're going to bond it and do it the whole road anyways. Uh, I don't know. I'm open to people's um, thoughts on that. It's plenty of money. I mean, he, when we did a budget, he, he <laughs> increased the budget. It's, it's in his writing, and then he added 20% to the budget. So there's more than enough money there. Um, you know, we've been doing this since 1986. I currently have a $20,000 road bond that the town owes me. It, it's been out there for 20 years. I haven't even collected it yet. <laughs> you know, this so is a totally, I'm good for it. <laughs> totally subjective comment. But Highland Park is what I think is the best neighborhood in town as far That's as the totally way it's built and the way it looks. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank does anybody you. have any? Um, you, first of all, so here's the thing. We, it's the release of the lots and it's the bond decision, right? What's the bond release? I mean, we're not releasing the bond. It's no. whether we change it. Oh, I'm in. Right. The, whether you know we, we combine it. Yeah, whether we change it. I'm combining right. two things. Okay. All right. What's every, what's, it, it's. We're, we're at six past. Release the lots. <laughs> yep. And no increase in the bond. Yeah. Are you making that motion? I move. Second. <laughs> that we... Second. All right. Is there any further conversation? I just have one more yes. question. Sure. Just for a point of reference, does anybody know what bond is for REC Hoffington? Mastriani's development, because that's about a mile long as well, and just the point of comparison. I, I can find out, but I, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Don't worry about it. I was just curious if it was consistent. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Any abstentions? Opposed. Okay. Um, you got do you have the revised form K? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, while, are you getting people to sign something? or? You yeah, you, we need the board to sign this. Um, I need to vote second. Oh, she oh. needs to vote Yes. Who, who and who? Yes. So it was moved by Mary, seconded by oh, Dave. Okay. Uh, everybody was a yes except for Deb. Deb's a no. Oh, you're, you're, you're I'm not against. Mm -hmm. Just out of curiosity, I haven't been down that way in a while. Have you started building any houses on that road? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We've, um, we have uh, four under construction right now. I'm not building all of them, which is pretty neat too. So I'm, I'm just, just going to remind Dave that we are past okay, time, okay, 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 so okay. he can he can he can I'll pursue I'll his periodically. Another I know. Just get that signed. I'll shut up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'll shut up. I wanted to just to shoot something out. Gary and I and um, John. Hold on a second. I, I will remember. Our meeting. Uh, do you need me for to sign that? So do you want to? Yeah. Everyone needs to sign it. Yeah, right, so don't anybody leave. Right. And you need it before Five you go? Sign it. Oh. The problem is it needs to be notarized. And I don't believe there's a notary here. So we would need one planning board member to come tomorrow or whenever. Has somebody had a volunteer sign it notarized saying that all these people <laughs> are who they are. What is tomorrow? Tuesday? So we're open until 7. Yeah. And there's a notary there till 7? Yeah. I would assume somebody in town is a notary. Okay. I hope. Is there any Clerks is a notary. They are. Connor, Connor, Connor is a notary. Connor is. Because I have I to do. come get sworn in tomorrow anyway. Yeah. If I can come in the evening. Um, Elaine's a notary too. Yeah. Yeah. 
That would be so, great. greatly appreciated. Okay. okay. We're so we'll so only do. one of us needs to come in tomorrow? Right. Yeah, so so everyone okay. has to sign it, or I guess De Deb, five people don't have to sign it. Okay. Um, but then somebody needs to come in and just. Okay. Attest. Sign it in front of a test that it was. First. We'll okay. Five first. All right. Steps. So I can go tomorrow after Thank the you. evening. So let me write that down. Um, yep. Two other things on the agenda. I don't know if we want to go over them, sure. the minor amendment. I think we're all set with these Excuse two. Yeah, can I give you a call tomorrow? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Do you have any minor amendments at Queens Farm? I don't yes. think yeah. do today or anything. Yes. I just didn't know. Yes, I do really fast. Time. But I think so. what I want to say um, okay. is that Gary and John and I am going to just shoot this out there, and if people have thoughts, they can uh, funnel them straight to me or to John, or both John and I. Um, are going to attempt a new process to see if we can drive some efficiencies, and that is we're going to start um, posting all the hearings at 7:30 and adopt that that methodology and at least try it for three months to see if it helps us. And um, more than that, um, Gary is going to help keep us um, on task. So if you hear him moving the agenda and times and so forth, take no offense. We're going to try and. Um, drive a more efficient process. So I'm sorry, I missed the first part of that. We are going to post the hearings all for 7:30 so that we can be more fluid. But there'll be an order. As oh, to post them for 7:30. Yes, okay. but we will have an agenda posted and, and try to adhere to right. it. But, okay. but then, if idea. we have people who, um, who don't continue show, and don't, don't show up, we can utilize the time more efficiently. It also just saves us that process of I'm going to open the hearing, I'll continue the hearing, yeah, and that's and kind of flip back and forth. Yeah, that's a great and idea. And so, so we'll even have target time for discussion and we'll be fairly upfront that you know our intent is to spend approximately one hour on this topic so will we just open all the hearings one back to back at 7 30 open, open one two all, three yeah we're gonna open all the hearings okay. for the night yep exactly yep um and then um and definitely provide feedback as we go forward with the new process to see how it's working if there's ways to make it work better sounds great kind of shy. Well, yeah yeah, you're so shy. So shy. Okay. So um, I just want to go ahead. Just one more thing on that, Muriel, too. And I, I think if people have other ideas for how we can be more efficient, um, please sh share them with us. I mean, I think, I think, what's that? Air conditioning. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. But you know, we weren't more efficient when we didn't have the, the hot room in here. So, <laughs> but I, I just, in, in general, I think that, that just with the, the staff we have, we all put a lot of time into this. Um, and you know, I know personally, I feel like like I think that that's that's an area for us to. I like how we operate as a board, but I think there's some some opportunities for us to improve from the efficiency perspective. I think that'll serve the public well. I think it'll serve us well. And I think it'll turn. It'll, it'll serve our staff well. Yeah. So. And I, and I, I I candidly kind of zoned out, Gary. So I'm sorry. But did you also say so? This hopefully allows us in, in with more um, fluency in the process to be able to get farther and have less repetition of hearings as well we're hoping right so we don't keep starting all over to repeat um to catch up and, and so forth the half hour hearings are but we don't we, we also repeating. we definitely don't want to lose people's participation and people's vibrancy and that whole thing but we do want to you know try to grind through the material if there's a way more efficiently for everybody. Well, I think it is good, like we did tonight, vote on some of the waivers now, so we don't yeah. keep discussing the waivers. You each meeting and nods. Right. Yeah. Just, yeah. just yeah. decide. It was really helpful. That was and nice. it gave yeah. some very good direction to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, good. That's good feedback. So if we have, uh, it's it's hard. You have a big long list of um, waivers. That kind of that kind of sits wrong for me a little bit just to to start with. Anyway, it's just a bit more challenging um, conceptually. Um, okay. So Haynes Farm bond release, two minutes or less. Um, so they, they requested that their bond be released. Um, it's constructed, it's four houses. Uh, it's off uh, Hayden Row. Ash Street. Ash Street. Yeah. Still <laughs> super close, Dave. Eh? Uh, that's, that's why I can't find it. I, I was looking, I, it's been bugging me for a <laughs> since last yeah. Tuesday. I'm like, we walked past it today, where is and I was like, four oh, new houses oh, have eight houses. Anyway, I know. Yeah. <laughs> that was my fault. Um, we received a confirmation letter from Luckner stating that the as built plan was received and the project was constructed as, a, constructed as approved. Uh, pretty straightforward. That's one right well, that was the pictures coming. that we had in the yes. package. Yeah. Okay. The little side street. Yep. Any questions? Any comments? No. I'll entertain a motion to release the bond. Release. The bond. So moved. Second. Second. 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, Highland Park. Oh, we did that. What was the other thing? Oh, the minor amendments. Do we feel like we can do that? I feel like I can vote on the, these minor amendments, but how does everybody else feel on the Chamberlain Island? Well, I had the opportunity to talk about it at length before our first meeting. I'm sorry. It is so the just just for the public, the minor amendments to the Chamberlain Wayland special permit conditions mean um. that they have an extra amount of time. The first two units would have to be delivered after 21 building permits. Is that right? Or all three of them? No. No, two. two I'm sorry. I made two hash at 21 of that. months and the third at 21 31 permits. months. 21 units. Units and the third sure, at 31, 31 units. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Units. And, um, and John, as the principal planner, would be the um, functional approver. Yeah. Approver of location of units as the process plays out. Yeah. All right. So um, and there are criteria, I guess. Yes, yeah. there are criteria. I saw that. Thank you. Yep. And there was also be a time frame. Yep. And this is uh, just for um, process to be quicker. A because the real estate market is so hot, but also none of us really want the task of going out and. Oh. And uh, approving it would much. Is there <laughs> some sort of contingency for a backup person for you if you're on vacation or? Outside? No, so that was the time when we put ten days because if I'm on a week long vacation, I would assume it would be five business days. So it gives you two weekends, five business days, and then a day. Okay. Um, and then if it's not approved within those ten days, or if it's not, no determination is made within those ten days, it's approved. It's approved. Okay. Can, can we can we just can we have a backup, the planning board chair in that? Eventually, I mean, I don't we think can. it matters. I guess the, the concern that I would have is um, if, for some reason, they reach out to me and I'm on a two-week vacation in the Caribbean and they don't reach out to you, how well, I is that any coordination? Is it a lane to back up? I mean, if something if something comes yeah. if something comes well, to the to, to the to the town idea. planner then and you're out or you're on leave or whatever, does it her, where does it automatically it forwarded it? to her? Yeah, I think it no, should. No, my email does not get automatically forwarded. No. to her. If you're on vacation, <laughs> it should. It could. I mean, I haven't been it's on vacation, so I don't yeah. know the process. Usually, it's just an outgoing message that says oh, the you're and contact so and so if you're if you're if you if you have an urgent need. Yeah. It needs to say that. I, I haven't had an away email yet because I yeah. haven't left. It should, it should, it will, it should have will. somebody to contact. Yeah. yeah, it will. I guess. I think the fact that it says principal planner and not a person's name is actually, you know, it answers my question. It really does, in a sense, have a backup because it's whoever's functioning in that role, yeah. you know, and yeah. if that temporarily means it's someone else in your in your department then I think that that covers it. I could add a, a piece that says, um, for urgent issues, uh, or if the principal planner is not available. I guess, or does it I, mean? I don't think, think about to. having two. I, 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 I you think know what, I, I think it's, I, I actually think so. We're not gonna let you go on vacation, that's all. That's all. Yeah, there you go. You know what, they, they can figure <laughs> out, if there's something that much of a time crunch, like, yeah, guess what? Either one of them is going to escalate or call somebody else. Yeah, I was, I was just concerned about having two. They for sure will. Yeah, yeah. I agree. They're very yeah. cool. In the future, if there's another I agree. planner and there's conflicting oh, opinions. I think it's fine. All right, so as written in our packet? As written. This is the motion. Go ahead. I'd prefer to say principal planner or their designee. It's just so that if you had a medical leave for a month or something, that you could designate a lane or someone else. Okay. That's it. That makes sense. I don't know. That's, that's fine. That yeah, let's hope that doesn't happen, but that's fair. <laughs> All right, or designate. He's going to designate somebody. We'll be up to you. Um, okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I'm abstaining. That's a no. Yeah, <laughs> that's an abstention. Okay. I wanted to say um, one more thing. That's a couple of things. So um, I am uh, coordinating a telephone meeting with the chair of the select board and the chair of the school committee um, to just coordinate early uh, about the steering committee role and our mission statement and our objectives for the growth study committee just to make sure that um, 
there is um, early enthusiasm, buy-in, or we make some changes as we're establishing the committee at the outset. Um, and also, um, I would like to also add into that conversation um, some sort of coordinated process for us to address the school bus issue at Legacy Farms North. Um, and um, I'm also, I, I will at that point ask um, the um, select board to put it on their agenda perhaps so we can talk about it um, at a, a meeting coming up in the public. It seems, it seems to make sense. That, that issue is on our agenda for next meeting at seven o'clock. The, um, the what? The Legacy the Farms bus issue. Okay, so new plan. Um, off. Yeah, no, um, no, we did that because it's a time crunch. Um, I can, I, I, I was thinking, um, I'm still going to talk to them um, in that, that three-way conversation about it because I think it makes sense for us to coordinate. Um, but I'm going to go to their open uh, mic night tomorrow uh, and just uh, introduce it, let them know that we're going to be talking about it, um, and ask them to keep it on their uh, agenda, you know, put it on their agenda so we get talking about it sooner rather than later, unless people have objections to that approach. Oh, look at him. <gasps> Good. <gasps> so Second. Said, he, he said so move. I said second. Discussion? Do we need to vote on it? Just you don't have to no, vote. No, I said so. I, this, I said so. This, is, this is me. This is me positing uh, some way to yeah. get this conversation going on the three. And I applaud your effort. Seems. Yeah. I, I, I guess my only thing. I, I'm just sensitive to committing. I'm not totally convinced that it's it's our issue to deal with, and I'm just sensitive to schedules and, and, and making sure that we get to the things that, that I think that we are at least fully responsible for. So that's all. Fair enough. I, I just ask if we... Fair enough. Yeah. I think that we have to identify who is responsible and how to go forward. So, so, I, so I'd like... Board's agenda? I'm going to ask them. But not us. I'm going to ask them. But, but I, I like the idea of when you're meeting with, with the chair of the select board and the chair of the school committee, I think that's a, yeah. a worthwhile topic yeah. to figure that out because... Yeah. I do think it's important to figure out where this resides. And if, if, if the decision is that's with the planning board, then then okay, I'm, I'm fine taking that up. I'm just my personal opinion. I but I think the funding, I think the funding and the conversation is going to end up more in the school committee's lap. Anyway, we got to go. Um, yeah. But just so you know that that those conversations are happening, so the public is noticed and you are noticed, and uh, we will report back. And you got everything off your finger? Yeah. Do you like how I do that? I learned that in grad school. <laughs> I'm going to wait to Push sign. Motion to adjourn. Right. Okay. Yes. One Second. Point of order. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so now, since we did set oh, hearing time right. for the things for next meeting, yes. I'll post the agenda as I have been doing it. Yes. August 12th, August 12th is the first agenda where we have the new system oh, yeah. going. Okay. Yeah. Thank um, you. Yeah, yeah. Um, Dave is on the new trails committee, right? Yes. The new trails committee? Yes. In a future meeting, can we discuss how trails committee can review, like this project, the Whisper Way has trails in it, and it would yeah. be good if the trails yeah. committee yeah. gave yeah. a feedback. So we actually need to make appointments next meeting as oh, well. Okay. I think that one's coming up. Okay, so we can discuss it then. <coughs> Are they already appointed? No? We, I think so. But we, we asked him if he would you know what? Uh, you know what? It should have. The notes were wrong on the trails committee. Yeah. 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 Motion on the table. Okay. Yeah. 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 I think second. maybe. Hey, and yeah. one of us. Did we, did we vote to adjourn? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.